in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed he never said the labor of the foolish whereas some of them would have found out why some escaped but he says the labor of the foolish the problem is not the labor the problem is those who are laboring there is a condition the bible says the labor of the foolish does what wearied every one of them why because he knoweth not that's what makes him foolish because he does not know how to go to the city there is a way to go to the city there is a formula to go to the city listen please there is a system that can take a man from where he is to his place in destiny and the bible says the foolish and the wise do the same thing seemingly they are all laboring but then the bible says it wearied every one of them and this is why it worries them it says they do not know how it did say they do not know the name of the city they know what they want they know where they want to go to but the system the system to take them from where they are to where they need to be you know i've said it again and again that believers are not confused as to the outcome of their lives what they want we all know what we want or at least we have an idea the challenge usually is the understanding of what it will take to leave us from where we are to where we need to be and i pray that god will open our eyes in the name of jesus write this word down destiny write this word down destiny destiny the word destiny is a very interesting word there's almost no man of god who has not spoken about this word we love it so much we dream about it we discuss it but the bible says listen please that there is a path listen there is a path that seemeth right but then it says the end thereof are the ways of death are we together now the word destiny simply means your predefined place of fulfillment write it down please i'll give you a few definitions quickly your predefined place of fulfillment predefined means that you do not guess in the loins of prophecy and in the loins of time there is a place allocated for you please listen there is a place in destiny there is a place in prophecy allocated for each and every one of us and your fulfillment and your relevance in life is tied to not only your discovery but your arrival you there is a condition there is a place where you must arrive to be able to find the joy and the fulfillment of living it's called destiny the second definition of destiny is the place where your assignment finds full expression your destiny represents the place where your assignment your purpose on earth your reason for living your destiny represents the place where you can say experientially that i am living the reason for which i am born i am making impact number three i went ahead of myself the third definition of destiny is the place of notable and consistent impact the place of notable 
and consistent impact. No longer the place of desire. No longer the place of ambition. That you have gotten to a place where your impact is notable. Your impact is significant. The last definition of the word destiny. Destiny also represents a place where you have earned the right to transform lives and to watch those lives transform others. Not just that you are transforming lives. You are fulfilling destiny to the extent to which you have earned the right to transform lives and you have the privilege in your lifetime of watching those lives you have transformed transform others. Hallelujah. Dr. Miles Munro of Blessed Memory a man who has changed my life so much I honor him in life and in death. He said this. He said, the greatest tragedy in life is not death. The greatest tragedy in life is a life without a purpose. A life without a meaning. A life without a reason for living. That you get up in the morning and there is no constructive definition as to what justifies your living. There are so many people angry and frustrated in life. Listen, please. We attempt to cover the need for activating and fulfilling destiny with many things. We try education. And then, you know, after many years of laborious study, we don't seem to make sense out of our sacrifice. We try marriage. And for many people, it's hell. They are living in hell, literally. We try money. We try several things in an attempt to get to that place. But it doesn't seem to bring that fulfillment and satisfaction. And many people in Nigeria in their old age are full of regrets, are full of pain, anointed people inclusive. So tonight I want to challenge us. There's nothing that gives me joy as seeing an individual or a people. Listen please. Living a life of purpose and a life of meaning. Your need for the anointing is useless without an understanding of destiny. Your need for financial prosperity. Your need for a wife or a husband. Your need for children. Your need for influence is absolutely useless. If you do not understand God's idea of destiny. Say there is a place for me in life. I want you to shout it with conviction. Listen, there is no man born of a woman. I know you've heard it, but listen to it with an anointing on it. There is no man born of a woman, regardless of the conditions that surrounded your birth. Dr. Miles Munro said there may be illegitimate parents, but there are not. There may be illegitimate relationships, but there are no illegitimate children. The concept of an illegitimate child is just a social cultural term. It does not exist. There's no such thing as an illegitimate child. Are we together? Everybody that appears on this earth appears for a reason intentionally allowed to come nobody listen nobody has the power in himself to just fabricate a child and bring him in this realm are we together now so every one of us seated here and those following and listening we have a place in life and destiny but so many people never get to discover it so many people never get to live in the reality. In fact, it's, it's cheaper to not even discover it than to discover it and never actualize it in your lifetime. You can justify your pain by saying, I never had a, an opportunity to know. But then it's painful when you know that this is the prophetic blueprint of my life. And then you never get to live it. Are we together? There is no one sent here on earth by mistake. 
you just arrive and then you say lord why am i here and god will say ah sorry oh, let's check why is he here exactly no 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 no. we can choose to refuse to become the prophecy upon our lives we can reject god's program for our lives and create another program by ourselves but anyone who will find fulfillment especially in this end time there are men and women who must align to the purposes of the kingdom listen you are not here to create a program for yourself you are here to walk in a program that has been predestined are we together Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 5. He was speaking to a little boy called Jeremiah. Revealing to him his prophetic destiny. This was a little boy who was destined to be a prophet. To speak the purposes of God over nations. And here he was having an encounter with the Lord. And then he was receiving a download of the blueprint. What he would live for. What he would die for. And here's what he says. Before I formed thee in the belly. I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and I did what ordained thee a prophet to the nations so on on Jeremiah's day of birth Jeremiah's mother would have held him and looked at him and said wow little child very helpless but in the loins of prophecy that was a prophet when you read further it begins to reveal the extent of his prophetic influence how that he was vested with the responsibility of not only speaking god's counsel to individuals but to kings to nations to nobles it was up to jeremiah to never fulfill that there was a man in the bible called elisha and the bible tells us that elisha was a farmer but in that farmer was a prophet a prophet who would do mighty things he would have died a farmer because he did not know the road to the city but something happened in his life may you find the road map to your destiny in the name of jesus christ let me tell you you see jealousy look up please jealousy resentment huh all of this criticism backbiting are a direct product of the confusion usually when we meet a stumbling block on our road to destiny and we are surrounded by all kinds of vagueness and confusion that idleness in our confusion will make us to turn and when you see another life walking with a level of dexterity and accuracy it usually will create a reaction that reaction is what we call resentment that reaction is what we call criticism are we together now so it's not about saying stop criticizing people you have to be too busy in your idleness you there is nothing else to do but when you find something that occupies you the time span air max for you will look too short the, a sense of urgency will drive you like a madman are we together now everyone has a destiny in christ hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 jesus who was a portrait of our life the firstborn among the many brethren in the similitude of our life said this said lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will O god lo i come this is why i came when jesus showed up no confusion he understood exactly the blueprint of his life when he went to the temple in luke chapter 4 the bible says it was given to him the scroll of Isaiah, the prophecy that isaiah prophesied about him and then he began to read the spirit of the lord is upon me because this and that and that look at a little boy at age 12 he had discovered his assignment already was about at the temple studying and preparing for a great destiny to an extent that he told his parents he said ah, do you not know are you no longer uh, um well not bible students but do you no longer go to the temple to hear the prophecy mary have you forgotten i thought you said the angel spoke to you why are you questioning my zeal to fulfill the reason for which i was born 33 and a half years and he made an impact with his life that for eternity we will never recover 
truly truly i believe in long life but sincerely speaking it's not how long you live but how effective there is a way a man's one year can become someone else's lifetime and impact in one year can be so transgenerational jesus died at 33 and a half or a quarter years old but out of that 33 years only three years were used in active ministry are we together lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me tonight i want to share with us on the requirements for manifesting your destiny that's not a topic it's just what i want to do now the requirements the cost dimension many of us are aware i'm not so much about the discovery as it is manifesting it I've, I've done a teaching discovering your purpose you can get it and several other teachings along the um the lines of destiny but tonight the lord put it in my heart to teach us there is a system everybody said there is a system you're not going to walk to to your place of destiny just um by default nothing works in life until you walk it nothing moves in life until you move it right newton's first law of mechanics nothing will move until you move it you sit down the way you are nothing will change you will grow older the only thing that will change is your age you are celebrating 35 36 then you jump to 47 48 but your life is not moving do you know my concept of birthdays i truly believe in celebrating birthdays but birthday is not just the fact that you were born in my opinion birthdays should be celebrated only when purpose is discovered and is being lived you truly do not have a right you have a right to thank god for being born but you have no right to celebrate your birthday what are you celebrating you should celebrate the reason for living if your life is so impactful you will not even be the one celebrating you would have blessed people too much they will be too grateful to leave you when you have to call everybody and remind them hi ah, hey, jimmy Abba, you mean you you are, you are just remembering that it's my birthday it's a message read the writings on the wall your life is not notable enough there are people they prepare for their birthdays one year as soon as they finish one they start what do i do for him for all that he has done in my life some of us harass people we have never invested in their lives two weeks to my bed they said just to let you know that it's my birthday and you send a general bulk message again reminder and then out of those 200 people maybe only two or three it's a message it's not for you to be angry it's a sign that your life is not blessing anybody notably let me tell you no matter how dark and depraved people are when you bless their lives they become too grateful to not notice it is god speaking to us i want to share with you some strong requirements you must be determined to not just succeed but fulfill your destiny my concept of success is fulfilling your assignment not just moving forward not just getting married not just finishing school not just getting a job or a promotion or a raise all those things are periphery the, the truth is listen listen let me tell you if you do not find out god's goal for your life and you are not living it you are wasting your time and you are wasting the time of others amen are we together i like you to pray a prayer before we go into the details of the requirement and say lord any price for my destiny i receive grace to pray it lift your voice if you are not ready you don't have to pray you won't go to hell but be sure that you are not going to rise any price for my destiny lord i'm tired of living my life carelessly i'm growing older time is going there's nothing that is giving my life meaning as i listen to your word now lord if it will sting me let it sting me but my heart my mind my spirit is open let no price be too great oh god for my destiny let no price be too great for my destiny 
Are you praying? Lord, there is an anointing upon my life the nations must drink from. There is no price that is too great. Make sure you are praying. Don't be careless tonight. You are about to hear something that will change your life. Some of you change your lineage because of you, through you. You've been complaining about what has happened. Now God is giving you a choice to make a decision that probably your parents did not make. Lord, let pain, let pain not stand my way to greatness. Give me grace to conquer pain. Give me grace to conquer shame. hallelujah let's write number one requirement to fulfilling your God given destiny the first requirement is an encounter with Jesus a genuine encounter with Jesus not coming out for an altar call that's important but an encounter with Jesus. John 7. When you read John 7. John 3, I'm sorry. Verse 7. Actually, it's 3 to 7. John chapter 3. The encounter that Nicodemus had with Jesus. Now, understand this. The context of that scripture is very interesting. Because Nicodemus was a teacher of the law. Nicodemus was a doctor. He was a philosopher. He was intelligent. He was a graduate. He was even employed. Nicodemus was not a small man. He was a man of influence. But every time together with his colleagues, they kept insulting Jesus, castigating Jesus, but they were secret fears and frustration. Nicodemus got to a point where his life was not making sense. And then he sneaked in by night and came to Jesus. And then he says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him. And then Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, right? He said, except ye be born again you shall not see the kingdom of God now he, he begins to talk how can I be born again will I enter into my mother's womb and then verse 5 he now says um, you know verily verily I say unto you except ye be born of the water and of the spirit then you cannot enter the kingdom right then Jesus now begins to speak and all of that and says the wind blow it where it listed verse 7 that's where I'm really going to verse 7 this is what he said. Marvel not that I say unto you, ye must be born again. He didn't say ye may. He didn't say ye should. Being born again is not an advice. Being born again is a requirement. Writing jam is not an advice. Writing jam is a requirement. Having five credits, no story is not an advice. Are we together? Is the necessary and sufficient condition to gain admission. Let me tell you, life has requirements. There is a cut-off point. The starting point is born again. It's amazing how many people want to walk with God, but they don't want to be born again. They want to be around church. They want to be around the things of God. They want to have Christian names. Being born again is more than just confessing Jesus. Being born again is prioritizing God. That God becomes your obsession, your priority, and your motivation. There's no hope of leaving Him has born again because he, he he explained it he said you must be born of two things the water and the spirit the water there represents the ministry of the word the cleansing power of the word an encounter with the holy ghost being born again is not just cheap talk where you just come and stand i believe in you you are pinching yourself and laughing it may be a starting point but i'm telling you being born again is much more than jesus becoming one of those important deities there is a herbalist at home there is jesus there is the charm it's just that he's the most important of all of them you are not born again please i'm saying this whether you are listening here and you are or you are following online if you have any other charm any other talisman any other material point of reference point of of activating the realm of the spirit outside of christ and everything that is consistent with his character you are not born again very simple are we together here 
you can't tell me you are born again and then under certain conditions you can receive something you know and many of us listen many of us young people you may be laughing at me but there's something they gave you from home they say look life this life is more than what you are seeing that is true you need help that is true but the, where the problem starts is what you are giving they pray for you and give you a bible and then they squeeze one charm that looks like an arrow they tell you to put it under your box you are not born again no sir see let me tell you anything that the lord jesus cannot bring in your life don't let anybody fool you that it will happen it may look like it's happening but you see because jesus said i am the door do you know what that means i am the legal access point to everything in the kingdom he never said i am the only one he said i am the door any other person can enter the house through windows but there is always a side effect you will not see it yet until the charm starts working so the charm will give you money and take your fertility are you getting the point now that's not the discussion with the herbalist he himself does not know the side effect because he is practicing so you collect the charm you start building the house but then you find out that you cannot give birth again or you give birth to 12 children and none of them become useful any other door listen there are many like this place now if we see you smuggling yourself through this window we know you are an armed robber you are a thief are we together there is a legitimate entrance don't tell me you are entering which way are you following jesus said i am the door i am the door don't tell me you are getting rich don't tell me you are getting blessed don't tell me you are increasing it matters to me whether you are following the door then i will know whether your success will have side effect on me let me tell you don't come close to anybody until you study the systems around his life and how he is doing what he is doing how she is doing what she is doing are we together now an encounter with jesus when you encounter jesus you will not only love him you will follow him you will not only love him you will serve him you will not only love him you will live for him you will not only love him you will influence others into that encounter with him has nothing to do with ministry has nothing to do with being a man of god it is the effect of an encounter when saul of Tarsus in the book of acts had an encounter with the lord jesus christ it changed his life forever remember what's the name of that short man in the bible zacchaeus when zacchaeus had an encounter with jesus what happened he changed his life forever zacchaeus just come down i'm going to your house at once zacchaeus changed when he met the centurion he changed there were other people i believe that jesus met that were not recorded in the bible because you see the way they had a soft spot towards him one of them was joseph of arimathea i believe he was a great man and because he was caesar's friend you can liken it to being in the same political party so he would not be outspoken about jesus but secretly secretly he loved him have you had an encounter with jesus enough to fuel your life for a lifetime if the lifespan do you know it's a terrible thing when people love god on campus or love god before marriage i have seen many people who used to love god on campus you see them today they are hardly born again some were campus fellowship presidents some held crusades have you seen some of our parents you see them drinking beer and you say daddy do something about it say look i held crusade in benin i held crusade in abuja i did three days dry you see them giving you what is supposed to be a good accolade and they say i've tried everything so don't even bring this issue of man of god you are just starting before you were born we served god have you heard of ebenezer obey i was in his band have you heard of uh, so 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 and so i i sang there they carry the pain of their frustration and make it look as though it's serving god that brought that to them it's a terrible thing for someone to say i once was with god and now i've left him no sir 
he said ye who have continued with me not those who started ye who have continued with me lift your voice in one minute and say lord i'm with you forever i'm with you forever i'm with you forever mm. lift your voice and pray i need you to secure your place because some of us are already one leg in one leg out the pain of recession is about sweeping you ah jesus jesus how i trust you how i prove the oracle jesus jesus precious jesus oh for grace to, to trust, trust lift your voice and say lord what shall separate me from your love not famine uh -uh. not cgpa not recession i am with you and i'm with you forever whether things work well or not whether ministry works well or not is a decision i have made lift your voice and pray any other person can make his decision any other person can say anything lord i know that i may be angry if i don't succeed but leaving you is not part of the equation it's a salt covenant it's a fraternity with you in life and in death i pledge allegiance to the land with all my strength with all i am i will see of an encounter you will raise your children after your encounter don't tell me you are a christian father are you hearing what i'm saying and you give birth to a child and then you don't care what the child is watching you don't care whether the child is going to church are we together many little children that's why i love our little ones in koinonia you may think they are not understanding what you are teaching but it's entering their spirit we live in a society where parents they, they just their assignment is just to give birth to children they give them education they give them every other thing but jesus are we together yeah you're going to church you leave the baby with a house help are we together you come back from church and you sit down other adults are watching certain things that may not be good for the child you don't care let me tell you if you have an, an encounter with jesus everything you do whoever is under your roof will do it oh come on you stay under my roof as i'm blasting tongues i want to hear your own in your room in your room you are responding you you don't stay under my roof i'm paying for your life and you are living your life then it means you are an adult enough if you stay under my roof you will serve jesus i assure you please take what i'm saying seriously our society is depraved today because many parents went to church but they did not have encounter so they only gave us what was valuable to them which was education as good as it is they didn't give us jesus some of us were on our way to destruction but God intercepted. Ah, hallelujah. 
you've heard me say it again and again when a lady brings a gentleman a lady brings a gentleman to her parents they don't ask whether he's born again and serious with God let me tell you in one minute I can know whether you are born again or not even if you wear suit ha <laughs> ha this is a culture this is a culture are we together so we give our daughters to foolish men who are anti-kingdom we give our sons to wicked women who are anti-christ and we this this combination produces nonsense that's what is destroying our, our generation now what we are reaping is the carelessness of 30 years the carelessness of 40 years and if we do not correct it let me tell you the key is not insulting the government there must be a generation that is addicted and no nonsense about god imagine a man getting married with his wife two of them pray in tongues no problem two of them love god no problem as you give birth to your child before wicked men hold him you hold him as the father Shakata bakataya, you are prophesying what are you doing? I'm prophesying. Oh, stop that thing. Are you joking? That's how I married in the first place. I call you blessed. You came out from my loins. I prophesy. You will. Everything is born after its kind. I will not love God and give birth to an arm robber. So you prophesy. If I'm your father, you should look like it. I'm showing you what lack of an encounter has produced in our society. To an extent, to an extent that if you are godly, they look at you as if something is wrong with your life. You have to explain godliness, something that should be institutionalized. Go outside of Zaria and see a young lady. If a young lady likes a guy, do you know how she attracts him? She starts singing bad and nonsense song, thinking that's what he likes. Are you getting the point now? So you sing all of the songs thinking that by singing that the guy will be attracted brother shout no way, no way. Abba. Abba. after reading Proverbs 31 uh -uh. ladies you too shout no way no don't bring shell and NMPC and deceive anybody do you have an encounter with Jesus listen don't just say I have an encounter with God. God means anything. Do you have an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God? Let me prove to you that a man has an encounter with Jesus. You are unashamed about submitting to his values. If you have met Jesus, then you must be ready to submit to his values. Don't come and meet me with your philosophy, your ideology. You have not met Jesus. Listen. If you are here in Koinonia, if you are truly under this grace, you should have submitted to our way of doing things. So when you see somebody who is under this grace, you know at once the way you talk, the things you do, your passion for God. You can easily know someone who just came to Koinonia for the first time. Sometimes people come to share testimonies here and once in a while they can be a bit unruly or a bit vulgar and I see the reaction in people. It's like no 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 this is anti koinonia culture i can see it in you so why will you go out with somebody who just told you he's born again born again is like an id card you can see it is visible okay this 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 thing this thing is i'm speaking from my spirit some relationships should be cancelled yeah we cancel it in jesus name I'm not asking you you will see what will happen from the prophecy because some of you are insisting I counsel it in the name of Jesus Christ destroy your life in the name of love love is not stupidity are we together if you have had an encounter with Jesus you must have the value system of the kingdom somebody comes to your house everything he's saying is nonsense every wrong word do you know there are words you don't even have to be born again societally speaking when you are getting to certain political positions they culture you when you when you are going to see the queen of england or they culture you you learn how to speak there are indices that show you have encountered god number one it's your words not just dressing your words 
you speak nonsense you say anything anytime you have ah, come on please please all kinds of selection in your phone there is the one for when you are high you, you just take it high then whenever you feel guilty when you listen to messages on rapture the coming of christ you just switch truly you have not encountered jesus don't laugh as i'm telling you this because it's a serious thing you are not going to bribe god into fulfilling destiny it has to be his way everybody say an encounter with jesus now lift your voice and pray and say lord anything trying to prove in my life that i've not had an encounter drive it drive it far drive it far drive it far some of you need to make some calls to certain people call that gentleman and tell him i love you but apostle just preached a message i can't marry you it can't work again sorry about the time i've wasted it can't work again it's as simple as that some of us who are about to get married some of us who have children it's time to get back bring the cross to your house bring christian values to your house don't live a life that is vulgar don't raise children that are wayward in discipline no sir no sir hallelujah listen listen you see these are the things that should be discussed in church i'm telling you this are we together yeah how many elders are not born again we just array the names of people. When did this one join our church? 1991. When did this one join our church? 98. If we give this person and don't give this, he'll be angry. Well, let's give him something. Are you seeing that? And then you now pick somebody just because he's old. He's the elder in charge of marriage counseling. You have never supervised what he's teaching the young people. And they come around and he's teaching nonsense. Do you think all this idea of beating wife... Do you think people just invented it? Someone advised somebody and say, I did it, it worked. Do it, it works. Let's return Jesus to our lives. Oh. Let's return Jesus to our lives. You know what I'm saying is not a lie. Give me you, everything else can wait. Give me you. Hope I'm not too late Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Hallelujah Praise the Lord So please, if you are here today At the end of the service, I will make an altar call Please, I want you to examine your concept of born again if you have not submitted to the values of the kingdom you need jesus please let's not argue this thing this night you need jesus i don't care whether you are praying in tongues no sir are we together then your life then your home if my shirt has palm oil you spill palm oil and you come with a white shirt and hug me and i hold you there if you leave, won't you see some stain? Something about, show me what implicates you and shows us you have met Jesus. Don't just say you met Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Acts, in the Jerusalem council, when they saw Peter, they saw these guys, they knew they were timid, but they knew they had been with Jesus. They saw them when they were timid, but now they had seen them men of conviction. Let's sit down and continue. An encounter with Jesus, number one. Number two, now that we have cleared the way i want us to sit down and talk now because this second point that i want to bring is really where the anointing is this night so what you have even received now is an appetizer here comes the main course may you eat it every part of it in jesus name the second key the second key to fulfilling your destiny the second key to fulfilling your god-given destiny is the power of preparation and thoroughness write it down the power of preparation and thoroughness 
preparation thoroughness preparation thoroughness satabala kurasi bahariete katusha the power of preparation the power of thoroughness second chronicles 27 please verse 6 second chronicles 27 verse 6 second chronicles 27 i like us to read it is projected one to read so dotham became uh uh-huh because he prepared his ways before the lord what was the secret of his exploits what was the secret of his might he prepared his way and he did that in the presence of god under his supervision preparation there is power in preparation write it down there is power in preparation we live in a time and a generation especially for we young people there is such an obsession for manifestation such an obsession for manifestation oh let me prove i'm a millionaire by age 20 let me prove i'm this and that let me prove there's nothing wrong with those things but preparation preparation there is such an appetite of bringing our future into our today to prove a point and we destroy ourselves because we lack that ingredient of preparation what do you do during preparation number one what do you do during preparation number one you learn and understand the principles of the kingdom I call them the mysteries of the kingdom. That's what you do during times of preparation. Your times of preparation are largely times of learning and understanding the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. God has called me into an extraordinary ministry. God has told me I have an apostolic or a prophetic ministry. God has told me I'm going to the nations. Every time in my dream, I see myself changing people. Thank you, man of God. But what are you doing about it? Oh, I'm already buying suits. God has even shown me who my wife will be. That's not preparation. You are, that's carelessness. I assure you, you will not arrive that way. Preparation. This great ministry that God is giving me, what will it take? What do I know? Do I understand administration? Do I understand finances? This great ministry will be fueled by the word and by the anointing. Have I understood the mysteries? Listen, I want you to put your life on a project. Find out all the tools you will be using in the place of destiny and begin to source for them. Find out. There are many tools we need. You need the anointing in the place of destiny have you discovered how to bring it and keep it in your life and multiply it in your life number two you need access to revelation the working knowledge of the word of god what keys do you have in your hand show me the keys you are accessing and i'll see whether you will get to your tomorrow finances our destinies are capital intensive so they require a lot of finances show me what mentorship show me what book you are reading oh apostle i'm doing business you will fail that's not the key the key is to receive knowledge the key is to change your mindset not to offer products and services yet that's the last step of the equation we love manifestation we love manifestation i receive text messages all the time and most of what people we, we, we like programs we like events conferences conventions someone sent me a text that he had a vision that we're holding six conventions in koinonia every year i said shift that vision to the future it's certainly not happening now no. convention for what what is the meaning of the word convention what is the meaning of the word conference we abuse these things because we do rituals without revelation are we together now now is the time for building please hear me now is not the time for buying suits now is the time for buying books now is the time for buying the experiences of people now is the time for buying the pain of people buy their experiences preparation 
I see many people who say they want to be men of God. I don't criticize them, but I'm just laughing. Because most people think all there is to ministry is to have the ability to throw somebody down. You are joking. If it was that easy, I guarantee you people would not be suffering. Benihin came around Nigeria and you see the number of desperate people. We all flocked in waiting to receive an anointing. What does that tell you? It's scarce. Genuine power is scarce. Make no mistakes about it. Do you know why many people do not rise? We are comfortable with average. Average will only bring you in the scene but never distinguish you. Reward is for those who are distinguished, not those who are present. <laughs> is God speaking to someone? There is power in preparation. Let me tell you, when I started out in ministry, I didn't do many of the things many people are doing in life. No. No. That time, ask Jimmy, I used to walk with a bag. Remember my black bag? It had Bible it had my books the books the speakings of god to my life i would always walk with it those were the times you see people who buy tape or they post tape maybe pastor chris any other tape and they are small rechargeable they would raise all their money and buy rechargeable not not many of us seated here you do not have any device for hearing the word of god you don't but you have clothes you are a young lady of 19, 20. You have clothes of a married woman of 35. It's not wise. It's, it's a terrible, it's an extended version of foolishness. Are we together? You, you must take your destiny serious. This thing does not happen by magic. God is not a charm. He's not a genie. You've got to be serious. Some of us, as you keep your Bible like this, it's Friday that you pick it again. And yet you move around. I am, I, I, I hope to be called. Let's see which one, uh, prophet, uh, apostle. I will use pastor. You are dreaming. <laughs> are we together? One gentleman sent me a text during miracle service that he was coming. I said, who are you? He says, a man of God somewhere. I said, that's all right. You are welcome. Then he sent me a text. He says, informing me so that they'll put a special reservation for him in front. I said, my brother, this front seat you see is a testimony. The front seat is not a wish. It's a testimony. This is a testimony. You, you come and sit down. The seat will reject you. Have you seen that kind of thing? Where people, kings, come and sit down. They say somebody dies. You don't sit down in a seat unprepared, sir. No. I look at your prayer life and I know whether you are preparing. You want to be able to stand and preach? That's what kills a lot of men of God. They have not built that spiritual capacity. Don't you know that praying in tongues is like doing business? You are making an investment of strength into your future. A time will come you will not have the time to do 10 hours every day again. I can't pray for 10 hours every day. I will be an irresponsible man of God because there are things to do. But there were times I would stay morning till night. I was building strength. He said, eat for the journey is far. Brothers and sisters, some of you, now is the time to lock yourself. You may look stupid, but you are building an extraordinary ministry. You are already in prayer band two weeks. You say they don't know me. Please sit down, Jare, and, and walk on your destiny. All this quest for recognition. Recognition. I think they should know me. No, sit down. Sit down. There is power in preparation. Let your competence announce you. Let the grace upon your life announce you. You cannot light a lamp and put it under a bushel. But you also cannot put a lamp that is not lit on top. All this quest for manifestation, please hear the voice of the Lord tonight. That's not the way to do it. That's not the way to do it. Someone asked me a question, I think, I don't know if it was a year or two ago, and said, Apostle, what are you doing with your life now? I told him, I said, I am preparing for an extraordinary life. He said, preparing? I said, exactly. Uh, you think this thing I'm doing is ministry? This is industrial attachment. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. This is not close to what I've seen in the visions of the Lord. It doesn't even look like it. 
compared to the koinonia god showed me this is a, a cave we are just waking up are you that inspired or have you started clapping for yourself and you want to build a camp around it affect my life breathe on me i look to you for life affect my life breathe on me i look to you for Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Let me come to your house and your room. Show me your library, and I see how serious you are with knowledge. Books are very important, they are a communication of your value for knowledge. When you buy a book, you are not buying paper. You are buying a man's pain. You are, you, are, you, are, you are buying access to a man's testimony. People's mistakes at a platter of gold for you to study and understand. There are many people who don't read. Let me tell you, how you know you are not preparing for your destiny is excessive idleness. When I see a young man who is idle, you must be lazy or you are not preparing. Do you know the urgency? Number one, for most of us, over 95% of us, a mistake has already been made in our foundation. I hope you know. Some of us got born again at 26, 27. You are already behind. At age 14, Mary was giving birth to Jesus. You are 25, you are not born again. You are already behind schedule. Why should you be roaming up and down? In broad daylight, you move around and you see people just taking sugar cane, gisting, and then they come to someone else's house. How are you? I was just strolling. Are you free? And then they are offended when you say you are not free. Everybody say, I'm going somewhere. Say it, I'm going somewhere. And now is the season of preparation. I will prepare you want to be a millionaire let me see the preparation let me see the preparation show me the character traits you are building that will qualify God to grant you access to such wealth you want to be an extraordinary leader show me those who are receiving mentorship from. you are moving around not doing anything ladies hear me don't be under pressure. The next thing in your life after school is not just marriage. Thank God for marriage. But build yourself. Focus on preparation than manifestation. You are not qualified to receive anything you are not prepared for. Preparation. Preparation. Settle down, prepare. Kata, kata, baladaba. Lord, you said you are going to give me the nations. Work on my character let me become an exceptional man of God Lord at this small level of ministry they are already criticizing me I can imagine the criticisms on great men like Papa Oyedeko and Adeboye Lord build me you have already told me that my ministry will have branches all over the nations of the earth can I survive the criticism that takes that, that having that kind of anointing will bring don't you know it's, it's, it's risky to be rich do you know the criticisms Somebody will look at you and say, young people like this, they, they, they thought something. You are right. You are right. Nobody becomes rich just by doing nothing. They've criticized you small. Somebody just looked and said, I don't like Pastor Femi's shirt. And he's, he's angry. He's quarreling. He said, no, no, what is wrong with my shirt? Ah, and then you now want to be a leader over two million people. You want to die? Ask Moses. Moses, the meekest man on earth. He was angry and about to kill himself. God said, calm down. That's how ministry is. Have you ever gone to God for prayer? And God said, no, that's how it is. So I hope you know that, that there is no breakthrough for this prayer. It's how it works. A very interesting friend who wanted to organize crusade one time the guy was passionate about souls he was not passionate about finances so he wanted to organize crusade I, after the prayer fasting visions everything he didn't even start because there was nothing to start with 
he couldn't even start I told him I said well these are the logistics that are part of ministry and he was so disappointed and angry because in his mind I was the sponsor of that crusade I said no way God did not give me any vision I am not the ram and the scapegoat you had from God flog out your way of funding that vision brothers and sisters preparation is powerful when you go through you read books and you see how a man of God will tell you 12 years in his life nothing worked and then you say that I'm four years that means there's hope for me that means it's not unusual it's not like I don't have faith let's continue going you study about a man who built his conglomerate he will tell you he built 20 companies and they failed he was the 21st one that is the one that is blessing you and you say I just built three and they failed ah there's hope for me you are learning preparation is giving you strength a time will come they look at you and they say you claim to be a man of God's wife look at your husband his mouth is looking dry you are not feeding him and you say Abba husband am I not feeding you you didn't prepare because if you prepared you would have studied other men of God's wife and they would have told you this thing is normal so as they are insulting you you just say oh so that's how it is your spirit has been prepared anything you cannot take now is because you are not preparing you will see a man of God lying down and think the place is cold. You lie down there and the heat will burn you because your skin. You know what they used to do for masquerades? They say they used to cook them so that nothing will happen. Allow preparation cooking. So that while somebody is shouting now and saying, Do you know Apostle is a herbalist? Do you, I know the woman that gave him power. And then you come and tell me as a, as a concern. I say, Apostle, I respect you. They are spoiling your name and then I laugh. <laughs> I would have cried in 2006 or 7 but now oh come on prophesy to yourself say myself grow up say it myself grow up there are many needless struggles we are going through because we are not prepared you are not the first to be criticized are we together you are not the first to go through challenges you are not the first to go through disappointment it's only because you have not studied others who had worse cases so you don't have a basis for comfort God is speaking to someone tonight preparation some of us are confused where we are now you don't know whether to start a church you don't know whether to start a prayer group you are not the first to start ministry go and examine the top 20 ministries how did they start there was a day it was in their mind did they start a church service Bishop Oyedepo did not want to start a church because at that time there were already too many churches based on him so your confusion about should I start a branch fellowship is because of your level and your thinking you are not the first to think like that when you learn that you will appreciate mentorship because you bring your mountain and somebody just walks on it and says, ah, I see this mountain, I remember 1981. Go and read the book. There is, there is a solution for that mountain. Oh man of God, our ministry is about to be thrown out now. We are owing 30 million. I said, just 30 million, I am compl complaining. In 91, we are owing 500 million. And then you now sit down. You are hearing a man talking to you and he says, look, let me tell you what to do. Pray, give a seed, and go to bed nothing is as bad as it is and then you conquer that i remember when one time um we held a little program and i was going thirty thousand thirty thousand i was sweating i didn't know what to do with my life thirty thousand it was from one book money somebody loaned us it was so terrible i remember the day it was even late dr bimbo dukoya's books when they brought her to zaria 2005 after organizing the program now very nicely his presence in worship are we together now there was no i mean the whole thing and they needed the money by nine o'clock nine o'clock by seven o'clock i don't i'm not sure i had on to 500 i was sweating around i didn't know what to do so now you are owing eight thousand and you are moving around my blood i, I think i'm having high blood pressure calm down calm down there is something preparation will teach you that you stand up and walk God is speaking to someone it is comforting to see those who have gone through what you are going through times 10 find out what they did to come out preparation and Dotan became mighty unmovable let me tell you I have studied the life of men in ways you cannot imagine 
studying their life built great comfort in me many of them were 10 times as ignorant as i am now yet they were able to go through some things and i said no at this level i even know more there's no reason why i should fidget it will work to work you are not the first to get married you are planning for marriage and you just say ah, my budget is 1.5 eh? dr jenny 1.5 you are seeing a man with two children you will not ask questions sir two children means you married what happened what did you do you know see it's pride to think your problem is new to everybody it's pride what is a mountain to you is a valley to someone you are not the first to have carryover hey will i stay or will they drive me please go to bed there are people who have taught this land you are seeing left right and center to a point that they just look at the board and say glory be to god oh. Fear is as a result of ignorance and is partly a product of not preparing. You have ignored the pain and the sacrifice of others. Somebody's pain you have ignored is why you are afraid today. Because if you buy their materials and study their lives, you will learn their pain. Koinonia was not built in a day. Many of you have never cared to ask the story behind it because you don't care. All you know is that you are enjoying the Obi Walker's dinner and it's free paid for just dress well and come and say, i like koinonia i like a ministry that takes care of us like this there was a story there was a story behind it preparation you learn the principles of the kingdom preparation that's the time of trial and error please hear me that's the time when you are you are learning to handle the keys of the kingdom like a baby trying to hold a key and open a door you will use wrong keys you will use wrong keys it's in the place of preparation you will know how the anointing works so god will keep building you you will read the books you will listen to the messages then one day you and god will go on small it somebody will now say please pastor femi can you just pray for our little group and say ah me I mean you're even calling me pastor and then on that day you will pray some things will happen others will not happen you will first go with confidence you are fasted dry it's even dry you went for the meeting and then you go there before you start preaching somebody's already shouting and you're like eh, that means this is easy then every other person you lay hands on now doesn't fall and i said what's the confusion i didn't lay hands on anybody somebody was shouting the ones i now in direct contact with the anointing so preparation you now go back in one message you are hearing you will hear a mystery that explains that operation and say, ah this is what i did wrong you have learned you are learning you are learning are we together you are learning about finances god told you you'll be a multi-millionaire ceo all that you've held home and abroad in your entire life is hundred thousand and you are working one day god will give you it somebody will just send you four hundred thousand and say please can you keep it for me for two weeks and you find out your body is shaking you can't sleep you will get up you are moving up and down you say ah should i touch this money and pay back quickly you see a revelation that you are not qualified you are beginning to see the effect of money then you learn from that preparation that money is a spirit it's not just notes it can do something to you and you are now thinking 200,000 is in my account and I cannot sleep. What will happen if 200 million is in my account? Then you begin to respect every man who you see sitting down. He's a millionaire but he's drinking a bottle of water. It took discipline to conquer that. What are you, what are you ignoring by refusing preparation? Is God speaking to someone? You are preparing. You want to be a good wife. In the process of preparation, you will read a book and see that a man of God's wife, she will now say, God told me. When God told me, my husband did not yet know. And God was sending me to women to go and cook with them. And you say, ah, the Holy Spirit will tell you now, go and do likewise. You will now say, ah, Auntie Shade, please, can I come to your house just to help you? And while you are washing place, you are asking her questions. And she's answering, what happens when a great man is angry? As a good wife, how do you treat, if your husband is a public figure, how do you shield him? You are not learning. You are only saying this brother, God has been speaking. You are not seeing me. He will never see you. Because God is not a wicked God to carry his servant laboring and just give you. No. You prepare.
prepare. You prepare. Say amen. Stop claiming things carelessly. Sit down and prepare. And before you know it, you will see them in your hands. I respect people who are mighty yet understand the power of preparation. There are people you see in this koinonia, mighty men and women in the spirit. Very mighty. You just see them quiet. Some of them have had one-on-one -on -one encounter with them. They are prayer like fire. Their word like fire. The maturity and wisdom upon their life is uncommon. Nobody even knows them. They are quiet. God is preparing them. One day you just see God will carry one brother and give them. Ah, where is this one coming from? Are you joking? Nobody comes from nowhere. People are preparing quietly. You are the only one standing where pe prepared people are standing. But you are not prepared. I receive grace to prepare. Lift your voice and pray. I receive grace. Lord, I see how I've been shortchanging myself. I've been acting like I've arrived. I've been trying to look rich. I've been trying to look anointed. By this teaching tonight, oh God, I receive grace. Grace, koinonia, pray. I stop complaining about what is not working. I value the pain of those who have gone ahead of me. And I make up my mind to draw from them. Shakata baratakaya. Leke prons kebariata lakoto subahaya. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A pastor sent me a text. And the pastor was really complaining. He said, man of God. God is increasing us in ministry. But right now I just discovered every other thing in my life has died. My prayer life has died. My word life has died. I still see miracles. I still see great things. But I'm so disorganized. I used to be an organized person. And I told him, I said, you are still using the mindset you, you were using when you were starting ministry. Are we together? Do you know what it means for a very busy person to still maintain his prayer life? There is a technique. It's not just as the spirit leads. There is a system. How do you maintain a prayer life? Reading chapters of the Bible. When from morning till night you are walking. How do you balance that? As an influential person. You are married with two, three children. How do you maintain your spiritual life? How do you maintain a good fatherhood? And a, a good husband? You are not the first to go through it. Find out. There are people who are flawlessly effective. Find out. There are men of God who preach five, six messages every week and everything is new. You want, you are already tired. Your little fellowship in one state somewhere, maybe just two or three branches and it's already killing you. Yet people like Dr. Paul Enenche running six services every Sunday, two services every week, intermittently they can travel to Europe and come back in the morning find out there is a system. There is a system, otherwise it will kill you. John G. Lake did not understand that. He did well in ministry and died in his family life. What is the secret of men of God who are effective in family? Their schedules are packed full, everything. I remember when we started, I didn't know that there was a protocol department that handled ministrations and made things easy. I used to handle them by myself. You bring your letter, you come and give me. I look at it. I say, okay, let me go and pray about it. At a point, there were several letters. I said yes to many people. I'll say, yes, I'm coming to your church. Yes, I'm coming to your fellowship. I will not even remember. I found out that I had to prepare four, five messages in a week. It was weighing me down. I said, it's not like I don't have what to say, but I can't stand before God's people and preach what I know God is not leading me to say. I can preach any nice sermon, but will it be effective? Are we together? What do you not know? I'm drawing you to a point. Your pain today is because you have ignored preparation somewhere. Then I began to study. I got Bishop Oede Post's book, Towards Excellence in Life and Ministry. I got Doug Hayward Mills' book, Church Administration and Management. I got some of the Adela Jazz books, Pastoring Without Tears. I got some of these materials and sat down. When I began to study, I said, ah, so this is how it works. I've been killing myself for no reason. Are we together? Killing myself for no reason. 
I remember when I had to be under pressure to answer everybody's call. It was like I'm a receptionist. Somebody will call and say, is this apostle? I just want to know. And for five minutes, you are arguing with the person. Is this apostle? If it's not apostle, please don't waste my time. And it's my credit too. I'm now calling. I say, it's apostle. I say, to apostle, please do you have time? Because what I'm about to tell you is, is boiling in my spirit. And I will now carry my big head and say, yes, I have time. And for 30 minutes, while you are talking, another text is entering, another call. And I find out that sometimes you can stay three hours. You are just answering call. And you are fagged out. You are fatigued. Someone who finishes work, he will work well, have a nice time with his wife, go to church and come back, then call you. That's when you now want to rest. Then others started calling by one or two because they found out that I don't sleep in the night. They will now call and say, Apostle, sorry, you. They just go ahead. I used to feel so guilty. If I'm sleeping and my phone is ringing, I feel so bad until I read a man of God's book that delivered me. Now it can ring. If it's an emergency, call the police. Yeah. People would threaten me and say, man of God, pride, pride. You've not gotten anywhere. You used to respond to us before. You even used to send us recharge card. But now you are, you are getting arrogant. I will feel so bad. I'll say, but God, please search my heart. Until I found out that that's how people are. It's not like they are just becoming it for me. They are like that everywhere. I just said, ah, please go to bed. Ah, somebody's already gaining wisdom. Gaining wisdom. So when you walk out of here and you say, see what she's wearing, you say, why does everybody hate me? No, you are not the only one. It's like that. You are just discovering it. You are just discovering it. I don't know why everybody talks about me. Everybody, is there something wrong? Ah, if, if you are looking at your legs, you will cut two of your legs because there are too many people who can talk. Ah, God is giving us wisdom. Preparation. 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 There are some of us married people. People come to your house. You are under pressure to cook for them and give them everything. Because let, let them not say we are not good. Let them say who. Oh. Let them say. Because you will find lousy people. They'll come to your house. Is there pepper soup in this house? You will think they are joking. They really mean it. You will rush, go to the market, buy, buy cow. You think it's just a joke. You are not learning to grow up. You need to listen to people who have learned to manage people like that. Two o'clock, they'll come again. They'll say, sorry, oh, we are here again. Is there still something for us? Then you will read a book that one determined young man one day walked up to them and said, please, visitor, we have, we have a program in this house. There are times we have Bible study. There are times I'm just spending time with my wife. There are times we are spending time with the children. It is important to let us know you are coming. Man say, what is there? What do you think you are? Leave him. Let him go. Carry his trouble and go. At least you are free now. There is something you need to know to set you free. Most of this depression we are having is because there is something you don't know. So you sit down there and think people are talking about you. What will they be saying about me? What will not they say? Do well, they will talk. Don't do well, they will talk. So be used to it and enjoy your life. You see what preparation does for you. So you create a system of joy that is independent of the things around you. And you become a motivated leader. And everybody looks at you and says, wow, this guy is a leader worthy of emulation. Then your ministry increases because you have learned how to motivate people into excellence. Say amen. You have to learn the principles of the kingdom. Very quickly, there are four areas still under the second point. There are four areas that you must work on. Four areas that you must work on. Number one, you must contend for a comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. Generally, as regards understanding the word of God and applying it. Understanding the word of God and applying it, you must contend for that mystery. You must know how to apply scripture to your life. If you want to be great, use your times of preparation to learn how to make the word of God work. Number two, you must contend for the secret to the anointing. In your place of preparation, you must find out. You cannot, um, it has nothing to do with ministry. 
you want to be great in life without knowing how the anointing comes you are joking so in your place of preparation you have to find out this anointing that has been responsible for the greatness of many how does it come number three you must find out principles of leadership and administration I know you are a man of God but you are going to have leaders I know you are a businessman but it will not always be popcorn forever a day will come you have companies with offices you must understand principles of leadership and administration number three you must understand finances you must in your place of preparation you must study finances no matter how much of a man of God you are a businessman a father you must this is a tool I'm mentioning for you the tools that you will use to fulfill destiny you need it study on finances don't just be a money monger don't just be a hustler don't just be obsessed about money and business understand the system understand how this thing works understand the challenges the vicissitudes that surround it are we together number four the last thing you must understand is people and relationships people and relationships brothers and sisters if you don't understand people and relationships you will die like a chicken they asked bishop oyedeko years ago they said what's the greatest source of challenge and pain in your life he said people they said what's the greatest motivation in your life he said people do you know the reason for many discouragement is people what they have said the reason for your encouragement the same people you must understand people get my message understanding people mastering relationships and then the prophetic implication of association you have to learn that i got a book years ago that changed my life how to win friends and influence people by dale kennedy right it blessed me it opened my eyes to the psychology of human relationships it helped me understand people thoroughly to know how to relate with different kinds of people you need this in your life otherwise you will get a job and after two weeks you are angry with everybody because you will meet sarcastic people even as a man of God you are going to meet people in your church people who are very disloyal to you you need to learn what to do with them you are going to meet people who are very anointed but rebellious you are going to meet people who are very submissive but careless and less as fair all these people you have to work with them you get a job you are going to work with lazy people you are going to work with very corny people people who are corny they will bribe and kill you if need be for promotion you've got to understand the ethics of working with people maintaining relationships Number three, the last point, action. The last key to opening up your prophetic destiny is action. The power of action. So number one is an encounter with Jesus. Number two is the power of preparation. Number three is action. The power of sustained action. Now by action, I don't just mean movement action means the relevant steps that you take action takes courage write it down when you're about to take action over your life your business your ministry it takes courage to act brothers and sisters there are things you are going to be doing in your life you will be the first person to do it in your entire family it takes action it takes courage Joshua chapter 1 he said be strong and of good courage nobody has ever gone to school in your family you are the first to do it there is fear i was i was talking with, i can't remember who i was talking with now we're discussing the subject of fear and i told him there are two dimensions of fear there is fear as a result of the presence of the spirit of fear there is fear as a result of stepping into the unknown you must distinguish them are we together now there is the fear as it is as the presence of a demon spirit you cast that one out god has not given us that spirit of fear but every time you are doing something new or something extraordinary that that ability to push through something that is new will bring fear it's not unusual 
there are many of us here who have gone through certain sustained seasons of preparation but action action are we together you are the first person in your house to get a job and for many months you have not submitted an application because you are used to everything being done free for you are we together you've not submitted any application and the Lord is telling you stand up and go to Benin and submit your application say ah God no 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 who is going to pay my money where am I going to stay you have to summon courage to get up and take bold steps in life are we together courage courage action requires persistence there are certain times your first step will be the wrong one but it doesn't mean you are wrong the step may be wrong but you are not wrong start the business start the church start the ministry action requires courage action requires persistence there is an ugly ideology in the church that the moment people start things and fail people rally around them are you sure it's God and they destroy people's destinies how many great businesses would have stood but for the advices from churches how many great destinies there are people who who left who left certain precious jobs that God gave them simply because of an advice if they are shouting at you like that is he worth it and then you leave it and now you are suffering are we together number three action requires a system now this is very important you don't just act carelessly you act based on a system you build a system you build a system around your action for instance when it's now time for you God has called you and God has anointed you and told you it's time you now sit down there, there is a system you can start a prayer group a prayer fellowship as God is bringing people they are getting healed they are getting blessed God is lifting you God is bringing people into your life most of the people God is bringing are not your members stop calling them your members and sons and daughters they are your leaders in the making are we together God never sends members he sends leaders they will come as drunkards they will come as troublemakers your assignment is to prove your apostleship make them become what you have seen in the vision they will not come ready-made action you must build a system around it we had a system like that when he and i was starting we'll get people born again there was a system you got filled with the holy spirit and then we were praying and so when people got born again in one week they were already on fire A system around your business you may now say okay let me now build a system I separate business money from my personal finances maybe I open an account for business I need to be serious now not that any money that comes is for the eating you don't know which one is for your shop which one is for you so you eat everything and then you calculate and say somebody is stealing somewhere no no so I remember hundred thousand enter why is there sixty thousand you hate it it's your account system all the great empires in the world all the great destinies that you see the uncommon lives in ministry in politics in influence in any area of life were built this way this is the way people become great they have an encounter with Jesus that encounter brings them to a submission to his values and the next thing they they plant themselves under a ministry or a platform or a spiritual family are, are you getting the progression now this so that when you get people born again you know what to do with them when people have an encounter with jesus the next assignment is to create a structure or plant them under the bible says they that be planted in the house of god they shall flourish in the courts of our god he said in old age they shall be fat and flourishing hallelujah just like you are seated now now you are hearing this you are taking steps based on what i'm teaching you will go back now and because there is an anointing upon what i'm saying you will not ignore it as you go back it will burn like fire in your spirit you will begin to make decisions that are consistent with it are we together now and you begin to see your life rise 
you begin to see yourself improve then you can know that I'm going to be a good man not just because I think I'm good I have studied the system that makes men good then I know I'm going to be a blessed man not just because I hate poverty I've studied the system I know I'm going to be extraordinarily anointed not just because I'm, I want to gyrate myself no, 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 no I've understood the system at that point you can look at life and smile it's called mastery you can rise to a point where you look at life and smile and know that I have a great destiny I have a great destiny and you look at your life after 20 30 years and it's nothing short of a life of glorious impact on eagle's wings a book written by bishop david oedipo i think to celebrate the 30 years anniversary of living faith then or so i looked at everything the progression on how he started and i said this is it consistent i have studied many great men of god that's how they started Benny Hinn, Dr. Mike Mudok, Miles Munro, all the great men that represent great mentors and fathers in my life. I look at their lives and I see consistently, consistently. There were times in their lives they were for many years. It's like things did not happen. Even living faith with the kind of speed that it is experiencing now, there was a time it was stagnated. So you find out because at this point your ministry is not moving. So you go back. What did they do? Oh, they fasted. They prayed. They met together as leaders. They readjusted certain things. Fine. Papa Ie Adeboe, there was a time redeemed was doing well but it was taunted and God told him that redeem needed to get to all the nations but as it were redeem could not cross certain cultures it could not go beyond the south and he went to the Lord and then the Lord gave him a formula he gave him a secret let him know that when you are dealing with global leadership you must have respect for people's culture and ideology it's quite selfish to want people to completely bend to subscribe to your culture kingdom culture yes but your, your sociological culture and paradigm, it may not be possible with every place. And so he opened up and painfully created that flexibility. So you can see one redeemed branch that looks like a contemporary um, uh, uh, church and all of that. And then you see another redeemed branch, youthful, another redeemed branch, still, you know, holding on to certain values. He just focused on the core values that represented the foundation of the ministry to preserve it. But then gave the flexibility and now redeemed this everywhere. Festival of life in UK is as if, I mean, you see them everywhere there. France, everywhere redeemed because of that secret. You can now look at that. Why is my church not growing? Ah, and God opens your eyes through that light. And you now see it. Oh, the reason why my church is not growing is because um, I, I, I hold on to my values, but probably I, I impose every value, both spiritual, cultural, sociological on people. And that value is restraining people. That may be just the key. You need to adjust. And then all of a sudden, you find out that your ministry becomes a habitable place for people. Action. Action. God is challenging some of us to take action. You need to take action over your finances. You need to take action. There are different action steps you can take. You can begin to read books every day. You can listen to messages every day. You can get up and subscribe to direct mentorship. As much as God grants you grace. You may need to settle down and tell yourself, I'm starting that business next month. I'm starting it. I have prepared. I have paid my price. I am starting it. I will start it. Or you can say this month of November is dedicated to scattering my CVs around. I will anoint it. I will pray. I brought it for miracle service. They have prayed for it. Now God is waiting on me. I will scatter it all around. Hallelujah. Action. We are enjoying koinonia today because of the power of action. We are enjoying what God has done today because of the power of action. Listen, when will the generations tied to your grace reap the benefits of the action you are taking or otherwise? Whether or not you move, time is moving. Whether or not you move, time is moving. It is important to move with it. Time is premium. The only way to redeem it is to use it well. You don't save time. You use it well. 
you redeem it by investing properly in it. Koinonia, I bring you a word today. There is a prophetic destiny for you in Christ. You have been escorting men. Some of you, after tonight, you've got to sit down. Brothers, look at me. After tonight, some of you, when you go back home, don't sleep. You need to carry a chair and sit down outside and just carry a clean sheet of paper and say, what am I doing with my life? This is not the way it's supposed to work. You have been joking around your destiny. You are getting old. Things are not working. There is nothing working in your life. Finances, you don't know anything about it. Fatherhood, you don't know anything about it. That sense of maturity, leadership, you've not built anything. Time is going. You have to give yourself a sense of urgency. A day will come, God will demand accountability for the grace and the life and the power and the strength that he has given you. He said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh. It's time for you to begin to study the Bible. It's time for you to begin to study the Bible. You want to become a great man of God. You don't know the Bible. You're going to crash land. You will be tired. Your members will be weary. They will leave your church and go somewhere else simply because you do not have the word. You are not instant in season. He tapped Elijah and said, Eat for the journey is far. I want to round up. Are you preparing? Are you preparing for your life? Sister, are you looking for a man or are you preparing for marriage? Brother, do you want to marry by fire, by force, or are you preparing? Marriage means a wife, marriage means children, marriage means the troubles that can come from in laws. Have you positioned your spirit to manage it? Marriage means leadership. I want to start a business. CEO. CEO of what? Have you studied it? I want to become a great man of God. I want to be president and founder or geo. All that one is stories. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Are we together? Listen. I made a decision years ago. Today now makes it, uh, not today, but 2016 makes it uh, 14 years. 14 years when I made a quality intentional decision. Now, I've been working with God. I've been doing certain things, but when I made up my mind to do what I'm teaching you now, 14 years ago, so when you see this today, it's a product of 14 years of consistency with the Holy Ghost. There were many other things that had happened before that time. But I made up my mind, I said, from today, I will not be irresponsible. From today. I started studying and making a decision over my finances and my journey 12 years ago. Two years after I started my journey with purpose, I started my journey with finances. Listen, not every time is conducive for everything. You must redeem the time. You hear me saying this thing, redeem the time. Please don't let anybody just come to your house and come and waste your time with gisting and gossiping that does not make sense. Early in the morning you are supposed to be praying, six o'clock they are in your house because you stay in the same compound. Bros, how are you day? Then please, please. What, what is that shout? Please, I'm happy. Today's a glorious day. Take it easy. Bros, you don't cook. You don't do this. Just speaking, tell him, please. I plan to be a leader. Take it easy. All these your vulgar statements and the rest. I appreciate you, but take it easy. Don't come to my house and come and do everything you want to do. No. You behave. Action. You begin to dress well. You begin to be serious about your life. Are we together now? Yeah. Actions that reflect your destiny. You stop excessively spending money anyhow. These are action steps that some of you need to take. Make up your mind that from today, no fake life. I'm not ashamed. If all I can take is Gary now, I'm not going to say others are taking rice. Uh-uh. By God's grace, I will take Gary honorably. Any lady that cannot like me taking Gary now does not deserve to eat my rice with me. I will continue moving. No pressure. 
no pressure god has given me two members i will guard them jealously and teach them with all my heart and love them no competition are we together now i open an account i'm saving i am disciplined can't be a student and you are buying with one of 10,000, 15,000. It's not wise. You are destroying your future. That 15,000 can buy you a book, 15 plus one secret to a happy home. I think something like that. Uh, uh, Dr. Mrs. Energy, 500 naira, 1,000. You change your life. Are we together? God blesses you with 10,000 naira. You go and buy materials and dress well. Dress well. You don't look irresponsible. Please, I'm challenging us. We are going to pray. But I need to be sincere with you. You look well. You dress smart. You start learning certain ethics. When you are going before the presence of a great man, you don't look foolish. You destroy yourself. Now you begin to learn that not every opportunity opens every time. There are some of you here, brothers, you don't have one good suit. One good suit. You can budget for it one good suit so that the day God opens a door you have something nice you keep wearing all these rags that people wear around looking like fools and then you smile around it no you will never be great that way are we together you come to a point in your life where you begin to act responsibly when you see ladies you respect them you don't talk like a fool speak everything and no 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 no, no. you act like you are preparing to get married there are some of you I see you, you are still acting like children, although you are matured. You begin to act responsibly. You see someone's child falling down, you create a sense of responsibility. Oh, let me help this person. You are taking action that is opening doors for you. You see a man that is anointed, you don't just stand. Let's see what he's saying. Pastor Alpha, what does he even have to say? No. The law of honor. See, there is a way you look at someone, you know he has grown up. You know he has grown up. Are we together? Let's take steps for our destiny. You may not like what I'm teaching you tonight, but just like others who are saying thank you now, you will say thank you tomorrow. I guarantee you. You may not like me for what I'm teaching you now because for some of you, I'm challenging you. Listen, there are some of you, especially ladies, because you are very beautiful. Your beauty makes it such that anybody who comes around you likes you. So there's nobody to really tell you the truth. My name is Joshua Selman. I'm telling you, you have to settle down and be serious with your life. You cannot float around a destiny full of flattery. Somebody has got to tell you this is wrong, this is right. The person who challenges you is the person who loves you. God is using me to do for us now what some of us did not get at home. And I will do it well. You may not, if you like, don't hate me, no problem. But you will thank me tomorrow. I love you too much to leave you the way you are. Stop all this childish play. Stop all these this irresponsible things people do around. Gossiping around, misbehaving. Some of you, are, you have already collected phone on credit. Go and return it. You don't need that kind of lifestyle. Oh, please, hey, Jimmy, uh, can I use your trouser for two weeks? No, you are, you are acting like a child. Can I use your shirt? I like your phone. Can you borrow me? I'm traveling somewhere. All these things are attitudes of children. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child. I spoke like a child. Now that I'm a man, what do I do? I lay aside these childish things. Have you laid aside these childish things? Or are you just growing old? Maturity. Let me come into your room or your house or whatever and see it nice. I look at you and I see how careful you are. I don't come into your house and I see your fridge spoiled, your TV spoiled, your table dirty, your carpet dirty. And I just see you and you say, Ah, Apostle, you are welcome. May his presence. No, no, no. You are not showing responsibility. That's the same way you will be an irresponsible man. The fridge will spoil. You say, My wife will fix it. You are not already assuming responsibility. God cannot give you a great ministry. You can't fix your fridge of 1,000 naira. You want to fix lives? No, sir. Are we together? You wear clothes that are torn and dirty. You don't care? No, sir. You have to behave well. Say in the name of Jesus. From today, I make up my mind. 
that I will fulfill destiny. Say it again from today. I make up my mind that I will fulfill destiny. Give me two more minutes and then we'll pray. How about bad friends? I can't round up without talking about that. Show me your association and I show you your true values. Show me your association. Whether you went to the same primary school, secondary school, it was your chief, um, 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 your, your best man, whatever. <laughs> Service, love you, God. What is the chief bridesmaid? Praise God. All this solidarity to wrong friends, you've got to make up your mind. You see, I've been saying this thing. Do you know some of us, if only you can leave your bad friends, your journey to a good life starts? Especially for us ladies. Especially for us ladies. You love God. But the moment you meet them, they come with their wrong ideologies. And then they force you to have to believe it. You just came back from church. And now you are making up your mind. I will be responsible. And someone goes, hey, this day, oh, ladies, can I sit down? You know that's what you just repented of. But because of the presence of that friend, you say, Todd, just tell me. And you now keep listening. Before you know it, you go back to your vomit again. May God deliver you this night. The courage to let people know you are serious about your destiny. See, I don't know what is it. This our ego thing is what we have refused to take out of the way. If I tell this person, sorry, you are interrupting my destiny, they will feel bad. They will criticize me. So what? So what? Make up your mind. Are we together? Make up your mind this night in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ make up your mind and say things will change I pray that you will really change in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that you will really change in the name of Jesus Christ there are many other things we need to change about some of you have up to 20 relationships consciously you don't care to you it's a symbol that you are a fine girl Say, do you know all these guys are dying? I guarantee you none of them will marry you. For you to be that careless with your life, they will ask you out. But when they are ready to marry, they will come to church. The brother will repent and dress well and come and look for a quiet lady who loves God. Every man, stupid or sensible, wants peace in his house. Are we together? Yeah. So some of us pride ourselves. There are good brothers coming. They love God. They fear God. They are coming. But you are there busy doing your emotional razzmatazz with all kinds of people. You are growing old. God will open doors for the brothers. The brothers you see today that cannot buy a good shoe, they will buy what will open your mouth tomorrow. And by that time, they will not be ready to marry you. They will marry people younger than you. Don't be angry. I'm sorry I'm saying this, but I'm challenging you. And brothers, don't think what I've said now is a license for you to be foolish. Because some of you deserve no almost forever until you do something with your life. Please, don't, don't ever use what I'm saying now as an endorsement to come and harass any lady. If you don't merit saying any no, um, they will bring you to me. You are going to meet me somewhere in the equation. Uh, we will meet and I will tell you, no, no, you are not, you are not responsible enough. It's as simple as that. She may not have the courage to tell you, but I guarantee you I will tell you. You know why I'm doing this to you tonight? I came with this spirit of fatherhood tonight because I, I want to challenge you. You're on your way to better days. You're on your way to better days. Every marriage you see here, by God's grace, some of our people here who are gloriously married, there were steps they took. Some of the things you are seeing here, the lives that are successful in ministry, by God's grace, you belong to a ministry that God has helped. These are the things that we do. They are not what we are saying. They are things that we do. He said, that which you have seen me do among many witnesses, do also. Do also. Be serious with your life. I can count the number of times you will come to my place and find me sleeping, sleeping, snoring. Any time of the day, I'm awake doing something. There are sermons to prepare. There are videos to watch. I am, I am so passionate about eradicating my ignorance. So passionate. 
Please rise up on your feet. You're on your way to better days. Three prayer points. Please, no moving around. We're going to pray. This is part of the meeting. I want you to pair yourselves into two. And let's just take five minutes to really pray. If you're married, please, you can hold your wife or husband, whatever, and pray because this is a serious prayer we're going to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit in one minute. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. Lo, I come in the volume of the book pray in the spirit hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number one Lord I vow I make a covenant with my destiny a covenant of seriousness and purposelessness from today I make up my mind to be serious and to be purposeful lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray young and old male and female those following online I enter a covenant with my destiny I must fulfill destiny from tonight I decree and declare in the name of the Lord Jesus no more joking no more playing games in my life Hallelujah. Please make sure you pray. Those outside, make sure you pray. Something is happening. Prayer point number two. You are going to pray and say, Lord, every knowledge I need, every light I need to prepare me for an extraordinary life, please reveal it to me. Lift your voice and pray. The information I need Access to light. Are you praying? Seka para to shuba na 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 na. Like a tapa kare to soto koto na 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 na. Take away ignorance, financial ignorance, ministerial ignorance, leadership ignorance. Take it away from my life. Spiritual ignorance. I bring it to the cross and I decree and declare that there's supernatural grace to work it out, to work it out, to work it out. Prayer point number three. Prayer point number three. Oh God, the spirit of laziness and inertia that spirit that refuses me from being diligent I curse it right now with Jesus name open your mouth and pray I challenge laziness spiritual laziness mental laziness physical laziness wanting something for nothing I curse that spirit grace to be diligent grace to be valuable to invest in myself. She kroto so para kama la 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 la. Rebeke te kroto so para la 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 la. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points. Father. 
destroy premature the appetite for premature manifestation manifestation when i'm not ready destroy that appetite from my life lift your voice and pray pray premature manifestation in business premature manifestation in ministry premature manifestation in family life premature manifestation in leadership i receive grace i receive grace i receive grace to prepare like Jotham. i prepare my ways before the lord and so i work strong and mighty grace for preparation Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point before I pray for you. The courage, the discipline, and the diligence to take necessary action. Because some of you, the season you are in now is the season of action. You can't prepare forever. You've got to step that spirit of fear, that lack of courage. What will people say? I like you to lift your voice and destroy it right now. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, it's time to take action over my finances. It's time to take action over family life. It's time to take action in ministry. The action that will move me over my career, over my job. It's time to take action. Please lift your hands. Let me pray for you. I want to pray for you sincerely from my heart. I want you to believe it. God sees my heart whom I serve. And God knows that my greatest desire. Listen. My greatest desire. I have always frowned at the leadership paradigm that makes one person a superstar. Shining while the rest are helplessly. Everybody can shine. It will not kill the honor of the leader. If you are a true leader, even in the greatness of the people you have raised, they will honor you and give you your place. There are many leaders who are not passionate. I made a vow with God when I started ministry. When Koinonia started, I've shared it with you. I will never pastor people who are not influential. I believe you can be anointed. You can be spirit-filled. You can be responsible. You can be financially free. You can be influential and useful in the kingdom. You do not have to choose one area. You can choose everything. You don't have to choose prayer and the word and neglect responsibility. You don't have to choose excellence and responsibility and neglect the ministry of the spirit. All of them are supposed to be complementary. So all these teachings that you see, I bring them, some of the teachings are hard, but they are designed to file our lives into action. The Bible says, iron sharpeneth iron. Are we together now? So as you receive this word, don't sit down arguing it. Don't be offended by it if it strikes you. The idea is to receive it into your spirit as the word from God. And know that this is coming from a leader that is passionate about your success. If I see you today excelling and doing great things for the kingdom, it's my fulfillment. You give me money today, I'm blessed, but I mean, what do I do with that one? But if I see your life transformed, you're a great man of God doing mighty things for the kingdom. That's my source of joy. My paradigm is not outshining people and having people struggling around. And then one superstar called Joshua Selman. My desire is to be the least even among everybody rising. It still will not destroy my worth. There is a name God is called. The father of spirits. Understand the revelation behind that name. Every human being is a spirit. He resides in a body. But God is the father, the author. Every spirit hailed from him. It was out of his spirit that every spirit came about. And the Bible says he is the father of spirits. Meaning it is within his power to manipulate every human spirit to cause his purposes to come to pass. Any and every. I spoke to a man this morning before leaving 
um, very touching the man stood he had been trying to see me and then at the airport he was there with his children and I looked at the man all his children one could not pay his school fees for four years final year had written his last exam but because of school fees they are taking him back to 200 level because he couldn't pay the poor girl the daughter was there the man was there standing and I said this is the signature of Satan when Satan comes to your life you can know he has a signature he will stamp it on your family do your worst he will stamp it on your destiny do your worst stamp it on everything around your life and when God comes to he will use his hand and erase it and said let me put my own and see who what devil will come to take it out of you I prayed for that man with all my heart I prayed for him passionately in that state of poverty and penury the children and the man they put together a seed I, I, I said can I ever accept this I, I collected the seed I prayed with all my heart and then I said look I I place favor may your seed become a tray let me put something upon it for you it's called the favor of God go back with this anointing and let it turn your life around that's the works of darkness some of us are seated here right now our loved ones are in such kind of chaos Satan when Satan does a thing you don't need to ask who did it he does it so clear that men will know it's his finger please don't confuse the works of darkness with the works of God the works of darkness is darkness the works of God is light that's why we're here to disagree with Satan and insist until we see his power prevail over our lives is God speaking to us tonight the captivity of Zion the captivity in your family the captivity in your life what is that obstacle that stands before you on the next level you see it but to touch it it looks like there is a resistance there is a limitation we are going to pray are you ready to pray tonight and then I begin to minister to you by the Spirit oh God turn again my captivity like the streams of the naked lift your voice and cry believe me brothers and sisters when you pray God hears you Turn again the captivity. Man Hallelujah. I like you to begin to mention by faith the things that must live your life this night, not tomorrow. Open your mouth and pray. Go ahead. Mention what must live your life tonight. Hallelujah. Someone sent a few weeks ago, someone sent a very humbling text message. Please help those under the anointing there. 
a few weeks ago someone sent a very humbling text message to my phone out of seven graduates nobody has ever been called for employment not even not i'm not talking of I'm, i said interview seven graduates no one called for interview and the gentleman according to what he sent me he said he went to bed in the night to sleep and he just slept and that's what he said he said he saw me in the dream i came and i prophesied it was like a koinonia service i laid hands on him and i mentioned the name of an organization that will call him true story he said he woke up physically with an alert from that organization to come for an interview now i don't know whether or not they have given him the job i don't know that part but that's god at work from a dream prophecy you wake up physically with the alert you didn't apply ah. listen listen don't let men fool you this god bar let me tell you when god decides to help you don't tell him how he would do it your ways his ways are higher higher than our ways his thoughts higher than our thoughts when when you see it's an act of faith to let god choose how to surprise you yours is to place a demand on his integrity by faith and let him choose how to rise and bless you you may be asking god for a cup of tea whereas he's coming with a hamper for you lord one cup of tea and i'm grateful and god says no if i give you a cup of tea man can also give you let me come with a hamper in a way that you will know this is me are we together three things i want to tell you we'll pray one more time number one god can act very fast he looks slow until he rises from his throne to help you listen to what i'm telling you don't get used to the fact that just because sometimes it looks like god is too slow god can act mysteriously fast i was watching a documentary i like watching documentaries um and on, on a, a, a national geographic channel and then they were showing how these animals all these these sea mammals how they eat one another and sometimes with lightning speed a giant creature can in fractions of a second just dissect another animal and i said wow so don't be deceived by the weight that it is a giant creature doesn't mean it is slow that your god is mighty that heaven is his throne and the earth is his full stool doesn't mean it would take him 10 years to bend down to touch you he can touch you from his throne and you will feel it from the earth god we're talking god here number one god can act fast so that you don't limit god and say lord i know you will act but um no problem no number two listen very carefully god can surpass your wildest imagination now it's difficult to understand but you must believe it god can surpass your wildest imagination he can he can so that it's good that you bring your petitions before him but that you allow your faith to expand to the capacity that can receive everything that god decides to give you and then number three satan and all the limitations that stand before you listen carefully have been defeated not will be defeated have been defeated what happens in a service like this is an establishing of that victory It's difficult to understand but you must believe this because the reality of our circumstances will not allow us to believe this is a fact but it's true because it came from the mouth of god himself that it is finished verdict is what we have come to enforce so that you don't stand and look at the limitation that stands before you and now begin to ask yourself questions but how will god do this promise how is god going to do this if god does it this way there's already a blockage here if god follows this way it will have to be five years before it happens if god uses this method my uncle already hates me and god says you only gave me three methods i have methods as infinite as my names i can use anything 
I can use a fish to give you coins. I can use a donkey to speak to you. I can use a bird to bring you bread. It doesn't always have to be men. It just has to be material bodies. I can use anything. Are we together? So tonight as we pray, why are we here? You have to understand. Number one, we are here. We are here to clear the way. The forces. Remember, there will always be forces that contend against the word of God. We are here to challenge them. Because most times those forces stand our way. They contend with prophecy. When the force that stands against your destiny is cleared away, you will be surprised how sometimes within minutes your testimony comes. Number two, we are here to allow the anointing of the Holy Spirit to produce possibilities in our lives. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is his force, is his instrument for producing change. He creates by his anointing. It is his word, but that word must be anointed. Are we together now? The word of God without an anointing on it for 30 years could not heal anybody, could not bless anybody. The word just roamed around the streets of Nazareth. But when the word became anointed, it became Christos, the anointed. So the word of God is coming to your life. I want you to be very sensitive, whether it is the prophetic word, whether it's an instruction to pray, whether it is the deliverance session. Don't just watch people fall and roll and do all of that. Let your heart connect. Be angry. There is an obstacle for sure. You go to bed in the night and all kinds of strange spirits molest you. You get up and say, it's all right. How can it be all right? If it's all right, who invited them to your life? Good things about to happen to you all of a sudden. Your enemies reach your destiny helpers before you and they give a bad word that closes your door, recycles your pain again. And then for many of us, what you need is that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will call forth the men, the men component. God helps by bringing men. God can agree with you. Men can disagree. You will still suffer. God agreed for David to become king. Samuel refused. David remained in the wilderness until Samuel agreed. Men can stop your breakthrough. It's not just demons. Men can stop your breakthrough. And not all men are castable. There are men who are gates even though they are hedonistic. God doesn't cast them. He gives you access to their heart. When a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. There are some enemies you can't drive because they are still gates. Are we together? Lord, I'm ready for you tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm ready for you. This is my family. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the Hallelujah, say hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Ha
Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the Father. You are seated on. You are seated on the throne, but be welcome here tonight. You are seated on the throne, you are welcome here tonight. You are seated on. Seated on the throne, you were seated on the throne, you were seated on the throne, you were seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Now let me do the singing. I'm going to sing this song once. I want those who are under the anointing while I sing. This instruction God is giving me. This same song. You guys have done your good music. Let me prophesy now with it. You'll be surprised to see what will happen. In here, outside, as I'm singing this song. If that anointing finds you, as you come out here, begin to rejoice. Because it is strange breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring them out. Shabala kato sabada siata. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. 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 No power can stand it. Glory to the Father. The forces must let you go. Hey, hallelujah. There's authority in the song that I'm singing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to my Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. They are leaving you now. They are leaving you now. 
I'm speaking by the Spirit. They are leaving you now. There are chains over you leaving now. There are chains leaving you now. I'm ministering by the Spirit. There are chains are leaving you now. Even the lawful captives, Kabarakatos. Chains. I'm seeing chains breaking from the hands of men. Chains be broken. The worship team already prepared our hearts. I command the chains to be broken by the authority of this kingdom. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. I'm commanding chains to break. Bring them out. The anointing of the spirit is breaking chains over flow one, two, three online. Chains. Chains of captivity. All kinds of bondages. Every force of darkness. It's time for you to go. It's time for you to go. Release their destinies. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Now listen, God is giving me an instruction. Hold on. If there is any power associated with your family, you will know now by the fire that falls on you. This is what the Lord is telling me. I'm about to pray. That if there is anything that is demonic, responsible for the challenge of your family, get ready now. Because I see a wind of fire moving from this place right there, outside. I declare it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the fire of the Spirit visit men and women and families now. Hold on. Listen, I'm still praying. Listen to me. The Bible says that Paul was at a place, it was cold in the night, and they put wood together. When they said that a viper was there, but it could not be seen. But when they set fire on the wood, the fire exposed the viper. I declare Shabbatos Katadia by the fire of the Spirit, by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Every viper hiding in any family, hiding in any destiny, be exposed now. Be exposed now. Be exposed now, Shantai Katosh. Be exposed now. Every viper, every snake, scorpion. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Where are the forces fighting your advancement? Forces fighting men's advancement. The Lord is judging them now. Judging them now. Judging them now. It's time for you to move forward. I command judgment 
on the forces fighting your advancement i command judgment on the forces fighting your advancement over overflow one lift your hands please everyone in overflow one lift your hands the lord is ministering to me overflow one lift your hands there is a mighty deliverance that is coming there at the count of three overflow one i want you to shout jesus as you shout jesus i'm seeing gates with chains breaking are you ready now one two three That lady that lady going back I'm looking at a lady but in the spirit I'm watching I'm not saying you're a bad girl my dear all I'm seeing is a serpent I'm not seeing a human being in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands I expose that serpent now glory to the father Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray a very interesting prayer. Don't mind me. Just allow me. I'm ministering under the anointing. I'm going to say exactly what I'm hearing in the spirit and if it doesn't sound logical don't worry just let me do the prayer snakes be judged snakes be judged snakes be judged snakes Serpents of the night, be judged. Serpents of the night, be judged. Serpents of the night, be judged. God is against you. Ebenezer, the helper of man, is against you. Snakes, I say it again. Be judged, be judged. No rest, no peace. Be judged. Snakes. Be judged. I'm seeing a lady vomiting something. That's what I'm seeing in a vision right now. I don't know what it is I'm seeing, but in the name of Jesus Christ, God is releasing people. There is victory. God is helping people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is opening my eyes. And I'm seeing fire. Not impartation. Fire consuming people's head. And God is saying his restoration of lost glory. That's what I'm seeing. Restoration. Something that used to be in your life and all of a sudden faded away I'm seeing fire coming on people's heads where are they oh God I stretch my hands now let the fire bring restoration 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 help them please restoration 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 I command restoration of every lost glory even the lawful captive shall be delivered all those who are out in front under the anointing here I declare every legal grounds upon which any spirit is operating in your life at the count of three by the mystery of the blood it leaves you now one Two, three, go, 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 go out of their lives. In 
the name of Jesus out of their lives when the blood speaks nothing else speaks again victory by the blood of the eternal covenant victory by the blood of the eternal covenant hallelujah the Lord is showing me a family here and I'm seeing that the father in that family I don't know if he's out of pressure but went to a herbalist and they gave him something to go and bury in the house you may not even know it this is something that happened a while ago and whatever it is seemed to backfire when it came to money issues he didn't go and pay like give the herbalist whatever it is that's what God is showing me now and I'm seeing that because of that every door in that family everything just closed I'm going to pray Lord wherever whoever represents that family here whether inside or outside or online I'm praying right now by the mercy of the God of heaven whatever enchantment and activities of darkness invoked by those herbalists I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus Rebecca, 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 like Becky, Rebecca, Rebecca, I'm hearing a name, Rebecca. Rebecca. You are seated on the throne. Stand up. You are Rebecca. That's the person I'm talking about. Come. Stand up. You are seated on the throne. Madam, where are you coming from? You came from Abuja. Yes, I'm seeing program? you in a vehicle from Abuja yes, coming. You program? came alone? I came with my niece. And my younger brother, my cousins, they live in Zaria. You, One came from Kano. You, but you came from Abuja. Yes, I came from What's Abuja. What's your name? Asmao Rebecca. 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 Asmao. Come. It's time for your victory. Lift your hands. There is. Let her go now. I command the spirit oppressing you. You have come to Koinonia, the place where God dwells. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power that fights you. In the name of Jesus Christ. This woman is going to return with very strange testimonies. Mama, you are Rebecca. I'll pray with you. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you. The Lord has located you and end comes to your captivity. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Where are you from? Where are you from? I'm from Samnaka. Please help this woman. Are they... Are they this is Mama, are they Rebecca? Mama, are you Rebecca? Rebecca. Huh? Rebecca. You are Rebecca, Mama? Okay. This one, too, I'm going to pray for you. Sometimes God gives a word and then I'm, I'm talking to you now, my dear. Where are you from? Saminaka. State of origin. Region. Kaduna. You are from Kaduna State. Yes, Come, sir. I want to pray for you. There's trouble in your family. You are in need of the power of God desperately. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ I bring to end this captivity the lady that is going back tap her just tell her to look at me just look at me it's over now in Jesus name all of you are Rebecca my dear salvation is coming and anointing is leaving me to you and it's for your family from next month, you will start hearing strange testimonies. Open doors. Mama, you are Rebecca. Who else is Rebecca? All of you are Rebecca. I'm going to pray for you. Kai, Ma, I have to pray for you. Yes, ma. The spirit of death is following your family. I'm, I'm not a prophet of doom. I want to pray for you. 
father in the name of jesus christ i lay my hands over our mommy help her please i command the spirit of death one of you here I'm, i don't know which of you but i'm seeing an anointing coming on one of you in front here there's one of you an anointing is coming on you um the lord is bringing deliverance right now you can't stand it it's, it's the power of god one of you an anointing is coming on you for strange deliverance mama be free in the name of jesus christ hi there's there's serious witchcraft excuse me just a minute I command that spirit to leave this lady now you must go you must let her go in the name of jesus christ he, he who the son sets free is free indeed in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ, of jesus christ. Um, this woman, this mama doesn't speak english i think she speaks yoruba she speaks Yoruba. Who is Ejimin? Can you come or someone? Just tell her the Lord is bringing breakthrough. You can whisper it now here. It doesn't have to be. It's your mother. Come. The Lord is breaking. The Lord is breaking a yoke. The yoke of delay. Ah, as I just mentioned delay, I just saw fire. Just left me. As I just mentioned that word delay. I'm about to pray on it but since since i just saw the fire let me just do what i saw in the spirit the spirit of delay be judged now the spirit of delay i say it again be judged now the spirit of delay the spirit of delay be judged now the spirit of delay open your heart open your heart and pray the spirit of delay be judged now any kind of delay the spirit of delay be judged now the spirit of delay be judged now be judged now be judged now breakthrough for your family god is bringing breakthrough mama God is bringing breakthrough. Your son will tell you in Yoruba. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's something on you. That makes wrong people come to you. I have to pray for you. Are you I'm looking at you. Very bad people come to you for bad reasons. No serious person. You know what I'm saying. I don't want to start bringing long. It's not. There is something. There's a spirit in you. That attracts those kind of people. They will never pass you and go free. They must turn back. And this thing is destroying your life. Hold my hands. Shout Jesus. Look at this. So you just think it's just love. You are in love with a beautiful girl. It's not just love. Out now. Go. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. I've not seen this in a long time. Hello. The Lord is showing me a map. Scriptures exalt and this map is from going the book to this state. I'm laying my, my hands son. now. Go this place. Let that son. anointing begin to find people within that region. Now I'm praying. You come within that region. Let the anointing find you. Deliverance for that region now. Shatakoto Seketea. Go this state. Deliverance now. From any strange power. Any force of darkness. If you don't know your state of origin and you are from there, you can know it now by the anointing. In the name of Jesus, anyone from that region, that's the region the anointing of the Spirit is focused on now. I command deliverance now. The strong men within those regions, let God's people go now. 
release them right now the spirits of the grave the spirits of ancestry I curse you by the God of heaven Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the Father. Please lift your hands. We'll pray for the sick shortly. But there are people here. Why God brought you tonight is to receive the healing anointing. I just saw it. I don't know where they are. They are in almost every overflow. There are representations. Lord Jesus, anyone who you brought here to receive the anointing for healing, let that anointing come. This is your moment now. Receive it now. Ordained by God to receive this anointing today ordained by God to receive the grace for healing I'm seeing that anointing coming on two people in worship team two people worship team that anointing that grace hallelujah glory to the Lamb the anointing to heal the sick you don't just pray for the sick. There is an anointing. I say it again. The anointing to bring healing. To transport the power of God from the throne to their lives. Receive that anointing right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mama, come please. Please help her. She's not running by herself. It's under the anointing. Mama, I see a new dimension of healing coming on you. A new dimension, just hold on. A new dimension of healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah! This mama is going to pray for the sick and you'll be surprised. There is an unusual anointing upon you for barrenness. For barrenness. I'm praying. Help that lady, please. In the name of Jesus. Receive that anointing, mama, in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace, the grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Alabashi Katusi Adabakuriata Jada Soto Sikatusi Alaka Hambaris Lekato Sada Pratuski Adabaladush. The Lord is asking me to stand in front of you, just to stand in front of you. That's the instruction I'm getting. The light shines out of darkness. God is removing something from your chest. I'm seeing something leaving you. I don't know what this is, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I stand in front of you. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. All of you who are standing here in the name of Jesus, I agree with you. And I declare, come, let me touch your child. I'm going to pray for favor. When you hear me say favor, lift your hands and receive. You need it in your life. Too many people have taken advantage of you. Even as... I'm seeing people laughing. That's, that's why I just stopped. This is very strange. A strange anointing is a sign of victory in the spirit. That's what the Lord is showing me. Strange. It's an anointing. Very strange anointing. You see, if you are not spiritual and you don't understand why God does these things, it's not showmanship. The Bible says he filled their mouth with laughter. I read it for you. You can't stand it. It's something that laughter you see is warfare. It's not just laughing hysterically. I release it. The families that is for. The individuals that is for. Laughter is a weapon in the spirit. It disarms the enemy. Oh, 
So my dear, when I'm praying for favor, please you stand to receive it. Eh? But I bless your child. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There's someone, your family member has been missing. This is more than one year. Who is that person? Because the person who is missing is still alive. Let, if she's the one, who is missing? Don't come and tell lies here. Are you sure? My father, I your talked father, to you about it before. You told me about yes, it. Yes, and you remember. prayed. Where, what happened? When last did you see him? 2016, August, Saturday. He told me he was coming and that was the end. From where? From Edo State, Benin. And you've not seen him? We've not seen him since date. We are still in search of him. How about you? My cousin's sister. Your cousin's sister is missing? Yes. All these people, they are, leave them. Their loved ones are... Just find out once there. Don't please. If, if you are not related to the people, don't please don't come here. We're going to pray generally. If you if you do it like that, there will be chaos. How about you? Yes, sir, my in law. Your in law? Yes, sir. What do you mean your in law? From the United States. Okay. All of you, your loved ones are missing. Your loved one is missing. Who is that? Your younger brother yes, missing since when? 2014. 2014. Yes. They've not seen him. Yes, sir. You see how Satan works? How can somebody leave home? For you to sympathize with people, put them in your shoes. Imagine that your child left home and said, Mommy, I'm coming, and never comes back. I'm prophesying to you three years. Your child went and said, Mommy, I'm coming. Until today. Come, Mama. Give her the mic. Hold on, Mama. Your, your child is alive. This boy, you see, are they twins or is he the same person? This one. This is the only one. What but happened to him? He, he left school. I put him in APU, he refused. Polly, he refused. He's busy taking drugs, going about lying to people that his parents are dead. All over at times, they call me in the police station or your state, but that court that is arrested, I don't know how they set him free at times. You see, our, honestly, let me speak to us young people. It's, it's okay, Mama. It's your only son. Only son. One, 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 one. That's all. Yes. You, that's how you know it's a spirit. Because the devil sat down and saw that these boys will bring joy to the mother. And then the devil decided to, it, will the lady not marry and go? Huh? He's very intelligent. In school, he was in the APU. He left the school and go away. What's his name? Awal is his name. Awal. Awal. Yes. Hi. We are going to pray. Like a month ago, from what God is showing me, this boy had problem with police. They were smoking. In the they were they smoking did, Igbo. Is, police came and drugs. packed them with his friends. Drugs. This is what, Mama, let me talk to you now. I'm the one talking to you. I know. You see, when you see me pray about this, this drug, this thing, that drug is a spirit. It's more than with due respect to doctors and this thing it's not just because of the physical thing it gives i'm telling you that thing is a spirit if you have a child or you know someone that takes that thing counseling is not the way out there is a real spirit that must be casted out are we together some of you here right now seated in this program you love god but that what what they, they call it codeine again Mama, 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 don't worry. It's, 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 it's okay. It's okay. Because you see the way these boys are desperate for this money. They will coin every kind of story and beg you and lie. You give them 100 naira. You give, once you give them enough to take this thing, they will disappear and go and rubbish it. Let me tell you, there is none of those boys that is bad in himself. There is none of those girls that are bad in themselves is the influence of spirits nobody will be killing himself and eating death like that every day 
Mama, you have come for miracle service. God will do something about you in this situation. Who is this, my brother? It's my mom, younger brother. Your for mom's over, younger brother? Yes, for missing. over 10 years, we have not seen him. 10 years, yes, you've sir. not seen him. Oh, pray. How about you, sir? My elder brother. You're the brother. pastor that came from Wari. Yeah. Okay. From Delta State. From Delta State, okay. Uh, my elder brother was missing about 20 years ago. We really forget, forgot about him in Ghana. He was in Ghana and he's, and he's yes, missing. Yes. Okay, let me pray with you. It's an instruction. Because some of the situations now, they are even very difficult situations. I, I don't know in myself whether some of them are alive or they've gone to be with the Lord or whatever. But my job is to pray. Because God has instructed me to pray. Mama, please stop crying. You came here with faith in your heart. Let me tell you, you must eat the fruit of your labor. And I'm saying this, I'm using this mother as a point of contact, not just to every mother here, but to all our mothers. The force that wants them to labor and die in pain, go to their graves in pain, we challenge that force now. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's an error to sow and someone reap. In the name of Jesus, every true mother that has labored to sow, may they reap in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying, everyone here whose loved one is missing and alive and walking in the earth here, I connect them back now in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for you. I connect them back now in the name of Jesus. Jesus called Lazarus. And when he called Lazarus, he came out. I call them by their various names in the spirit. For as long as they are alive and walking on this earth, I put a desire in them to reconnect to their families. Those who have been jailed because, you see, some of these people, let's be very fair, some of them, they, they smuggle their way out of the country. They go to Libya, they go to all of these places. Some of them go to do prostitution, unfortunately. Some of them go because they want to make money. Someone tells them, come, travel, and all of that. So some of them, they may even be in cells in some of these places you may never know. But regardless of the case, for as long as they are on earth, we cry for mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, may they be reconnected back to you. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Please go back to your seat rejoicing. Go back to your seat rejoicing. Go back to your seat rejoicing. I hope someone is holding that person shouting me. My friend, come. You are doing your ushering work, but I will pray for you before you go back. Eh? Look at me. I'm looking at you. The Lord is telling me to tell you, August 7th is a month that breakthrough will begin in a very strange way for you. Hold my hands. August 7th, don't forget, write it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this gentleman. You have revealed to me August 7th. I prophesy to him in the name of Jesus Christ. May God change your life within that time. May God change your life within that time. May God change your life within that time. I'm seeing a ring, a ring in the spirit. I'm seeing a ring in the spirit. I'm seeing a ring. Ordinary, when you see a ring, you would think maybe God is saying he's bringing marriage. Maybe marriage to families. But this one, God is delivering people from spirit entities with all kinds of fraternities over their lives. Right now, I stretch my hands. That's why it's important to let the Holy Ghost interpret things. I know that many of you may not believe what I'm praying, but you just allow me to pray. Every spirit entity covenanting to you as a husband or as a wife, I set fire on this ring I see in the spirit. Be free from them now. Ladies, be free now. I command those spirit entities to release you. 
in the name of Jesus Christ for the gentleman I command freedom for you now from any entity laying claims over you you go to bed and they come to you in the night they try to molest you they try to sleep with you they can use faces of people you know or you don't know or animals anyone under the sound of my voice who any stranger comes to him in the night while you sleep fire is coming on you now 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 i command that they let you go now for some of us when good things are about to happen just when you're about to get it you go in the night and someone comes to sleep with you in that dream as soon as you wake up from that experience no matter what it is it's gone whether it is favor whether it is breakthrough fire is still speaking i'm praying at the count of three oh god you who is a mighty deliverer i pray that your anointing will search for these ones and bring them deliverance now one two three let there be deliverance for you now deliverance for you now from any spirit entity laying claims on your destiny hallelujah thank you Jesus this lady with lime yes you come no look at me look at me I'm talking that one with you yes come where are you coming from Benway Benway State look at me look at this are you seeing she just stood there and while I was looking I just saw a spirit through her look at me and turn the face now it's very funny how these things work see one of the prayers you must pray in your life is for the grace of open eyes if your eyes are closed in this life and all that is open is your brain you will be in trouble open eyes is not something just for prophets it's one of the true riches of the kingdom you must cry that God will open your eyes. Not to see nonsense around, to see something that is destiny molding. Now look at this girl. How will I stand and see someone there and call her out? Imagine that this lady went back like this. To her she will now say, oh God, so this is how you didn't locate me. Sensitivity, discernment is a priceless spiritual gift. Sensitivity. It comes by praying in the Holy Ghost. It comes by praying in the Holy Ghost. Not wishing. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You activate your organs. You have to pray for a long time in the spirit. For your spirit to be heightened. To be able to perceive spiritual things. Otherwise you will get into all kinds of error. Wrong perception. That you have started seeing things does not mean they are clear. You must continue in the place of prayer until it becomes accurate. I just showed you the thing of ring now. Some of you may see that ring now and then tell somebody it's, it's not marriage as it were. You see it was something else but it's a ring. This lady has bad luck in her life. Very bad luck. I have to pray for you. she just came quietly standing this I would have shared the grace and the dear lady will go back and then it will look as if God is not in the place in the name of Jesus I'm seeing you cough I'm seeing her cough that's what I'm seeing in the spirit that she's beginning to cough I don't know why what is having to do with coughing but in the name of Jesus Christ
Katos kabarandushki anakaladia. Karus kadi prehaski diabali. Let everything that speaks against you leave now. This lady swallowed something in the dream. Someone came to her, gave her something, and she swallowed in the dream. If you ever say you like this girl, everything in your life goes down immediately. I'm not saying she's a bad girl. Please don't get me wrong. I'm teaching her something here. She's not a bad girl, but this is the operation in her life. There are people, do you know why we minister to people like that? This is what sometimes prophets see, that if they don't get discernment, they go around saying, someone now may not see this correctly and say this girl is a witch. He's not exactly wrong in terms of saying that there is war associated with her life. You can come now and hold her hands as a businessman in two months of relationship, everything goes down. And she knows she loves God. But if you are not discerning, you will now call the poor girl a witch. And everybody will start running away from her. She's not a witch. There is just a challenge. And then if you also say she's alright like that, and somebody marries her, that guy's life will be torn into pieces. This is the testimony of so many families. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it's true. Human beings carry spirits. They carry presence. Father, liberty for her. The devil is already... Ah. Someone in overflow one and overflow three is being delivered from fibroid. 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 I just saw a hand reaching into someone's, like someone's stomach to bring out something. In the name of Jesus Christ, that devil of fibroid, we'll pray for the sick shortly. We'll be very fast at it. Fibroid is gone now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is gone. Can we pray for the sick very quickly? Now listen, I want you, if you are coming here to be prayed for, come full of faith. You don't have to say what is wrong with you. If you are not asked, don't worry. And all of us who are going to pray for the sick, we are going to make this very fast. Are we together? now um as always overflow one and part of overflow two part of overflow two you will come in here come and stand in front here uh, no no not main auditorium sorry not overflow one the main auditorium and then half of overflow two allow them to come here overflow one move to your projector stand please the remaining part of overflow two and the, those standing at the roadside you can move to the projector stand overflow three all of you trusting god for healing please move to your projector stand we have about 10 15 minutes to do this very quickly while we are doing that ushers and uh, I, I don't know whatever whoever needs to help them submit your prayer requests very quickly if you have your prayer request you are coming out here for healing come come there is a god that heals please if you have your prayer request you can lift it up, write it very quickly. No, no, the ushers will collect it. Ushers. And, and then if, if there are not many, PR department can help them. Let's make it snappy. Or any other department can help them. Let's, let's make it very... We're going to make it very fast. Please and please let there be orderliness once you have been prayed for. We may not have time to take testimonies. We are just going to pray very, very quickly. Hallelujah. Okay, let's see. Um, Ejimi, Ejimi and Benga, overflow three. Two of you can go to overflow three. Um, let's see. Pastor Alpha and promise overflow one outside pastor Femi and Kenny overflow two let's do it like that I'll, I'll pray I'll pray for the ones here by myself hallelujah let's pray together in the name of Jesus everybody say amen, amen. 
Father, we declare corporately that your healing power will begin to flow. Heal the sick, deliver the oppressed. And in the name of Jesus, bring yourself glory by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Please make sure while we are praying, the ushers also come to these people in front so that they can have it. We'll be very, very fast so that we we'll finish on time. Thank you, Jesus. You're the name above every other name. Hail Yahweh. Great Yahweh. You're the name above every other name. Great Yahweh. Great Every other name
Jesus becomes an answered prayer. Please, ushers, make sure make sure that we have everyone's request here. Those online connect by faith and praying now. Make sure you are praying. Prophesy. Are you praying? Father, I believe I believe if the devil didn't stop your request from getting here he will not stop it from being answered father in the name of Jesus let there be miracles I anoint this request I anoint them in the name of Jesus. I anoint them by the power of the Holy Ghost. I anoint them in the name of Jesus. Signs and wonders, breakthroughs, impossible situations. Turn things around, oh God. You have declared that you are turning things around. Turn around everyone's captivity. Turn around everyone's captivity. Let there be testimonies. Hashalakotosiadak. Break the spirit of delay. Ma prato sodo barakato shiara balaraba. Shaka tata bakato. Embreketo shkala brates adebaras. In the name of Jesus Christ, we decree and declare. Hallelujah. Every time we do this, we do this one as instructed, and then number two because it's an opportunity to have everyone's desire and everyone's request here. Father, I stand upon these requests by faith. Turn them into testimonies, O oh God. Turn them into testimonies, O oh God. Turn them into testimonies, O oh God. Lord, these requests are a representation of the needs of your people. I stand, O oh God, in the name of Jesus on their behalf. And I cry, let fire fall upon this request. And I prophesy to you on account of this request that the Egyptians you see today, in the name that is above all names, may you see them no more forever. I say it again that the Egyptians you see today, may you see them no more forever. Some of you before this month is over, you will return with strange testimonies. 
It's still two days or a day or so to the end of the month. Between now and even tomorrow, may you return with strange testimonies. Whoever must be judged for this prayer to be answered, may it be so. Whoever must receive a conviction about you between tonight and tomorrow or till whenever for this prayer to be answered, we declare it so in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. Put your hands together for Jesus. Lift your hands to receive the prophetic word now. We're rounding up. The miracle service is not complete if you don't receive a prophetic word. Prophecy is powerful. It's powerful. It creates. I release testimonies to your life. Let me say it again because many of you didn't believe it. I release testimonies to your life. 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 The key that you need to open the door for the next level may be handed it over to you in the spirit. The kind of favor that you will need to testify in the name of Jesus. May the God that gives favor to men grant you favor. In the name of Jesus. For those in need of restoration, I prophesy receive restoration. For those in need of an urgent miracle, a miracle that has to happen on time, Otherwise, it will cost you. I stretch my hands in the name that is above all names. Let it happen to you. Even within 24 hours, let there be that miracle. For those who have never had an opportunity to laugh, every time you want to laugh, something comes that must force you to cry. I announce to you, the season of your laughter begins tonight. Where you have been despised, I place an anointing upon you. And tonight I call you Beulah and Hephzibah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here in ministry and things are not working, you are doing your best but it's just not working. Receive the grace to begin to walk in a greater dimension of signs and wonders. Anyone here in business, in the name of Jesus, you are entering the season of your best days from now. Anyone here trusting God for a job, for you or for your loved ones, between now and the next miracle service, return with your testimony. Return with your testimony. Return with your testimony. Every challenge plaguing your family, not just you, a family thing, everyone is crying from it could be patterns, could be whatever it is. I stretch my hands right now and in the name that is above all names, I bring those patterns to an end now. For those trusting God for financial miracles, your miracle, the area you are trusting God is directly in the area of finances. I agree with you and I release my faith. May the God that prospers men surprise you. Everyone here called barren or standing in for any barren person. Return as a mother of joyful children. The anointing that makes things work. The grace for performance. I release that grace upon your life. Everything that is upon your hand now, I command it to work. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I announce to you let july from july 1st to july 31st may it be named a month of strange miracles strange wonders strange miracles strange wonders
strange miracles strange wonders in the name of Jesus Christ tonight for some of you as you sleep may my God show you the secrets of your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ every area where you are trusting God to give you divine direction in the name of Jesus every spiritual mechanism that God can use to communicate to you I declare that let it be so for you revelation after revelation finally whoever needs to arise and help you they already have the capacity all they need is the willingness I pray for you let me tell you breakthrough is very easy when your helper likes you your helper has the means but he needs to have the heart some have the heart but they don't have the means you need both I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus that any man and woman positioned around you that has the ability to help you I pray that God will put it in their hearts to help you I speak over your life a new level of spiritual encounters I say it again a new level of spiritual encounters for some of you I'm holding my Bible as a prophetic act because some of you have divorced this book not willingly but by reason of the operation of spirit the only time you open your Bible is in church or a koinonia right now fall in love with this Bible fall in love with the Word of God an appetite for the Word of God I release upon you every kind of spiritual laziness you say I wake up to pray by 12 and sleep till 8 in the morning or you get up to pray and five minutes you are snoring back it's an attack I cast that spirit over your life fresh fire upon your prayer altar in the name of Jesus Christ we declare peace over Nigeria we declare peace over the north we declare peace over Plateau State we declare peace over Kaduna State we declare peace over Zaria specifically for Zaria we fortify the spiritual borders of this city and in the name of Jesus we declare that no orchestration of darkness will arise to disrupt the peace and serenity of the people may the angels of the Lord in the name of Jesus secure the borders of this city secure the borders of the north and we pray that the perpetrators of wickedness be judged by God in heaven in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ you are here and you need Jesus desperately keep standing please you need Jesus desperately desperately you're saying man of God I need Jesus as a matter of urgency I have seen the value I have seen the usefulness of Jesus in my life hitherto every time I hear about Jesus I I resent him I scorn and laugh at those who talk about him but from tonight's meeting the Holy Spirit has convicted me and I testify and with all humility I declare that I need him second category of people man of God I love Jesus with all my heart but I know that I need a strengthening in my spiritual life. Things have gone haywire. If God does not help me, there will be no way out for me. You belong to these two categories, Overflow 1, Overflow 2, Main Auditorium. I'd like you to walk out here quickly. Overflow 3, I'd like you to run to your projector stand. Very quickly, I'm counting 1 to 5 and we're done. 1, God bless you. Appreciate them, Koinonia, they are coming. 2, you're still indecisive. It's not good for your destiny. Jesus, I love you. I want to make a genuine decision for you. Three. Please, if they are coming from other overflows, clear the way for them. You are running to Jesus. Don't be ashamed. No man condemns you. 
You are before his throne of grace to obtain mercy, to obtain grace. We are all products of his mercy and grace. Four, please come quickly, quickly double up. Apostle, I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not. Join them. Join them very quickly. I remember coming out for an altar call, but I, I honestly don't know the name of what I'm doing now. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. Koinonia, is this the best you can do for them? Jesus said, ye must be born again. Salvation is non-negotiable. Listen, let me encourage everyone. Koinonia is not the only platform for genuine salvation. The first mission of this ministry is massive salvation of souls. We must seek and save the lost. Not just save the lost when they come to us. We must seek them. Are we together? Because many of them may not be in a position ordinarily where they can receive salvation. We seek them through intercession. We seek them by engaging them in the conversation that leads them to Christ. God bless you. Lift your hands, all of you. Some of you are crying. You are standing before the Lord. Honestly, the Bible says, whoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Say this loud after me. You are making a confession to the God of heaven. Say, Jesus. Say it again. Say, Jesus, I believe in you. That you are the Son of God. Tonight, I declare that I need you. I need you in my life. I need you in my destiny. Therefore, I declare that you are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my King. I hand over my life and everything about me to you and to your Lordship. I receive eternal life. I receive the Spirit of God. And I declare from today until forever I belong to Jesus I declare that I'm a child of God the grace to walk in victory is mine amen keep your hands lifted Jesus thank you father we give you all the glory for drawing these ones no man can come to you except you draw them I pray that the grace that keeps men let that grace keep these ones the grace that lifts men, let that grace lift them. The grace that secures them, let that grace secure them. In the name of Jesus, I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that the grace to walk in victory be given to you. You will move forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Congratulations. Thank you so much for this bold decision. Please, I'd like you to follow this gentleman waving his hands. Just follow them in concert, all of you. There will be a group of people to just talk and pray with you very quickly. All of you, God bless you. Let's honor them. Let's appreciate them. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.